Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen. I am Sai. I'm joined tonight by Salt and soon to be Shibby. Uh, but for now, Salt, we're going to get into this. This is the quarterfinals now of the Victorious Rival Draft. We are almost at the finish line. But before we got get there, we've got a couple games to get out of the way. Tonight, we're going to be watching Ducks versus the Tigers. This is going to be a best of five now. So this is going to be really, really interesting. We're going to mm -hmm. see... Who can take it between these two teams who are actually on an equal score going into these quarterfinals? So, lots to break down. Uh, yeah, what are, you, what are you thinking about the Ducks versus Tigers tonight? I mean, the Ducks are coming in really hot. You know, the momentum should definitely be in their favor, but you can't count the Tigers out just yet either. But, I mean, the Ducks did pick up a pretty solid ADC. They also won against the ADC that they did end up dropping last week as well. So they are on fire. You know, they're flying high. They're soaring through the skies. And they're looking really solid. And we did get to ask Camcom a couple questions, the captain there of the Ducks. And, you know, we asked how the meta really affected them. And overall, uh, the team felt pretty solid. They didn't really change up too many things as they did go in. And they were happy to take their AD, uh, get a new ADC as the, you know, the weeks did wind down and they grabbed that one up for themselves and right before playoffs they had a huge, huge week. And for this series specifically though, uh, they learned Amistad is unable to play for the Tigers tonight, which is very, very unfortunate. And they are role swapping Karthik to ADC and grabbing a D4 jungler for themselves. So, uh, they do. It is going to be a little bit rougher on the Tigers because they have lost one of their key carries, but they did bring themselves in a pretty solid jungler. But this, you know, this two one does mean that the Ducks have home side. They have side select, and we'll see where they do end up rolling. You know, what side do they take? Well, the thing is, I mean, you look at it, you go, ah, oh, Tigers have had the these roster swaps, and could that be damaging mm -hmm. to them? Luckily. You know, I'd say if it's going to happen at any point, at least it's happening now in the quarterfinals where at least they have a best of five to figure some things out where if they drop a game, okay, can they turn it around? And they can even afford to drop, you know, a couple games before they really have to turn the ignition on. So uh, there's still some, some, some shots for Tigers to be taken here and some games to be winning. So don't count them out at all yet, chat. We've mm -hmm. got to watch this one play out for sure. Um, but we had to say goodbye Salt to the Wizards and to the Falcons. Mm -hmm. They had such an incredible... I wasn't here last week, chat. Uh, but they had such an incredible previous week. What happened last week? Where'd they, where'd they go? Unfortunately, they did fall short. And the last game on stream of the night was the deciding game for who made it to playoffs. Ducks versus Falcons. Which bird was going to make it? And the Ducks ended up flying higher on the night. I mean, both teams played really well throughout the night, but the Ducks were the ones to take it home. They showed that they know where they want to play through, and they have their win cons, and they have solidified their style going through into playoffs. That's uh, that's incredible. You know, this whole tournament has been like a nail-biter. It's been so back and forth. We've seen so many fluctuations in the standings, and it feels like a movie script where we've had some games that have just been so contentious. We had, like I say, not last week, but the previous week, we had the Falcons and the Wizards who were both kind of counted, counted out by a lot of, a lot of people who mm -hmm. won every single game, both of them. They, they won every single game that they played. So just absolutely incredible. And then, uh, yeah, now to have the Ducks versus the Falcons and it was whoever wins that last game of the night is going to go through. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'd say you couldn't write it. You probably could, but just for it to happen that way is really eventful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, looking forward to tonight. We've got the Unicorns versus Guardians. We're not going to be watching them tonight. We are going to be focusing on the Ducks versus the Tigers. So what does it mean now for these teams? Do you want to explain a little bit of the format, Salt, in terms of this quarterfinals, the semifinals, mm -hmm. and how this is all working? So f top four teams make it to play right it is double elimination so on the top bracket in semifinals one we have the unicorns and the guardians first and second seed taken on each other tonight and the unicorns do have head-to-head -head there so they have they have side select so they can grab whatever they want game one and the winner of that will move over to the grand finals there as you can see in that little bracket thing courtesy of victorious there they will take that first spot they will get home side and they will get to choose what they want for the final for the grand finals right and on the bottom side, in quarterfinals, we have the Ducks versus the Tigers. And whoever wins this game moves on to the lose, losers' finals or semifinals two, where they take on the losers of semi of, of game one or match one and see who dukes it out and brings their A game on the night, which is next week. We'll see that match 
happening then. And finally, week three of playoffs, which is grand finals. Get to see who is going to bring home the entirety of this tournament. So who, realistically, whoever makes it out of this match right here is getting paid. They're making money. They're happy, <laughs> right? They're going to have a great old time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the money's the thing that you're playing for. So you want to get those ranks. You want to get that money. If you can get into that position when you're at least winning something, that just feels all that more real, especially when you're competing in tournaments. It feels good to be in the money, you know, to, mm -hmm. to make it that far. But as you're mentioning, it is it is the last resort now for Ducks first Tiger. Well, the Ducks and the Tigers, because mm -hmm. at least with the Unicorns and the Guardians, if they lose a game tonight or they lose the series tonight, that's okay because they will still be continuing on in like the lower bracket of the of the semifinals so they're they're safe for at least another game whereas for the ducks and the tigers this is it now we are saying goodbye to one of those teams tonight so everything to kind of play for for them uh any quackers in the chat absolutely let's see some quacks uh, salt let me ask you then between these two teams how are you feeling you seem to be a little bit more confident for the ducks we mm -hmm. obviously know with some of these roster changes to the tigers do you think uh, in terms of like play style, in terms of caliber of players, in terms of how they're coordinated as a team, what is it for you about the Ducks that you think might take this one? I think having, uh, you know, their, their top side and jungle has been playing very, very well together. I think that's going to be something to worry about. And, you know, spec or not spectral, sorry, Sloth PhD being that big carry in the middle lane going to be huge. He's going to be popping off. That's what happened last week. That's what's going to happen again. He's playing very, very well. And, I mean, what more can you really say? You know, I think, realistically, the Ducks have built themselves and played around their win condition in Sloth, and it showed up very, very huge in Week 5. That's how they pushed through that final game against the Falcons. They took over so early. Sloth was just roaming around the map, making big plays on, a, you know, a high-risk, high-reward pick, right? They picked Lucian, and that's one of the strongest early-game laners in the game. Does not scale very well. So they were like, yeah, we're not going to scale. We're going to end this game fast and furious and it was a stomp it wasn't close the falcons just really weren't able to you know put up a wall and play defense against that huge aggressive composition coming in from the ducks and i think playing against a team that you know isn't fully used to what they're doing yet especially with the roster changes that we keep mentioning here the tigers are going to be on the back foot and i think that's exactly what the ducks want they're going to be gunning for their throat they're going to be you know looking for aggressive plays and against a team that's not super synergistic they can't react all that well it's going to be scary yeah i i you know i agree i, I hear what you're laying down and i i do think that the tigers need to be careful in these games they do need to suss out the ducks here and, and figure out how they can outplay them in this best of five like i mentioned at least they've got a couple games here now to get under their belt to get uh comfortable and to feel good mm -hmm. about it um is there anything else that you really wanted to kind of go into here before we do i knew we know we're going to be jumping into the game in a few minutes time and hopefully we will have shibby at that point hopefully but anything you kind of wanted to discuss about the draft pick anything you think compositionally that the ducks tigers might want to do uh going into the draft pick or things they want to keep in mind anything you want to absolutely ban out anything that you want to be making sure you're picking up ban seraphian i think that champion's really really broken right now especially with the durability changes and the buffs that did come through i think just like ban that champion or pick it for yourselves really really strong you know great wave clear you can put it in that 80 carrier role as well and just you know have a wave clear bot in that bottom lane right or you could have that in the mid lane as well i think just having that sustain having that aoe shield is just so insane and super hard to deal with very obnoxious and it doesn't really lose lanes. It, it more so just plays like a neutralizer. And it's basically like an immovable object, like, you know, like Vex. You don't really, you know, win lane, but you're able to move around. You can wave clear very well and help your team through either CC, which is what Vex is great at, CC and an engage. And with Seraphine, it's all about that supportive capabilities. Yeah, and I think that's a good point about having that ability to have a neutral lane because a lot of the time mm -hmm. in League of Legends, especially competitively, if you're losing one lane, then maybe that's okay if the other two lanes are winning, right? Or mm -hmm. But if you're losing two lanes, three lanes, like it's really hard to come back from that, especially from the jungle, uh, jungle position to be able to mm -hmm. support your team when you have multiple losing lanes. So if you can have a champion that can secure kind of like a neutral position, then that really frees up your jungle to try and help out the struggling lanes or try and um, carry through on the lanes that are just absolutely securing those, those victories. So... 
Okay, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll, still, we'll see some of the Seraphine. I'm sure that some of the players are watching, and I'm sure that they will keep that in mind uh, with their picks. Um, but have you had a chance to speak to any of the players? I know that we're into week six now. Have you had a chance mm -hmm. to talk to some of the players and get kind of their feelings this at this stage in the tournament? Not really. Haven't had the greatest chances to talk with people, but all I know is tensions are high, especially for this match, right? Again, it's do or die for both these teams here. Loser is out and gets zero dollars in zero cents, right? So, I mean, both teams are gunning for that money. They want to make big plays. They want to push, you know, to that semifinal spot and get themselves a match up against, you know, either the Unicorns or the Guardians and show what they're made of. And one thing to note, though, Karthik definitely, you know, not unfamiliar with this territory this player has been in this situation many a times before you know been that fourth slash third seed and had to fight their way all the way up to finals and he's done it twice in a row so he's been he's still gunning for that finals win yeah. but you know <laughs> always 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 close you know five game series every time i'm excited yeah well, we'll see if it goes to, to five games. I mean, that would be incredible, but also scary because mm -hmm. we will be getting late into the evening uh, for myself, at least. I don't know uh -huh. about the rest of everyone else, but yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be a long evening if we're here for all five. But, you know, if they're great games, if they're interesting games, that energy just builds and builds and that story just gets created. And I, and I, and I kind of kind of want to see it as well. Um, Salt, predictions then from you on these two teams. I know you're kind of leaning towards the Ducks, but do you mm -hmm. have... A number that you want to hit with for these two i'm going to i'm actually going to go three two i think it's going to go the distance um okay i really do think that you know it's going to be a long night right especially with the current meta and you know when you have an auto field adc you're just going to be playing safe you're not going to be trying to make things happen so that's what the tigers are really going to be doing they're going to be trying to lay back and just you know roll with the punches as best they can because it should be the Ducks who are in control for most of this series. So if they can just, you know, pick their comp positions properly and scale up, I think that's how the Tigers are going to win this or have a chance of winning this series. But the Ducks overall, I think with how they've been playing, they definitely have the momentum swing coming into playoffs. Uh, the Tigers, unfortunately, did not have the greatest week and that had to deal with roster swaps, very unfortunate situations that did end up happening, right? But at the same time, it's that momentum swing that's very important and I think the Ducks just have that on their side, but the Tigers are still a very, very competent team, so I am going to give it 3-2. Yeah, yeah, very respectable uh, kind of prediction there and I definitely agree with you. I think that the Tigers can, you know, if they play well, like you're saying, if they can... Kind of let the ducks come to them let the ducks make some mistakes try and capitalize on that and try and um you know establish a lead from there then they should be in a good footing a good position and it helps out with that new roster of theirs that they can kind of play a more comfortable game if they can kind of just play on that back foot play more defensively mm -hmm. i also would like to say ducks three two um i think that the series between ducks and tigers throughout this whole competition has been very uh has, i've just seen shibby's prediction has gone up and i was like hold on a minute how is well, he how'd here? that happen uh, how'd that happen okay in chat camcom letting us know that shibby has predicted ducks 3-0 okay very confident for the ducks there from shibby yeah i'm gonna go 3-2 to the ducks because i think that um the series between ducks and tigers has been very very close all throughout this competition so tigers have been able to take some games but i think ultimately the ducks might just eke out that win there so overall mm -hmm. 3-2 there. But uh, without further ado, Salt, should we kind of go to a little quick break before we jump into the draft pick? You happy with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds great. All right. Sounds good. Hopefully we have Shibby back in a moment. Chat, don't go anywhere. We're going to have the predictions coming up soon for you and you can win some channel points. And uh, until then, we'll see you in a second.
As a child, you would wait and watch from far away. But you always knew that you'd be the one that would find the right thing. And you, you'd let a wild eyes escape. 
Well, we're back. Thank you once again for Mr. Shivy's return. We have him here for the draft at the very least. You know, unfortunately, we didn't have him for the little bit of desk segment, but uh, look what it is. It's a Seraphine band. Who would have guessed? Wow, they listen. That's great. That's crazy. Yeah, I think, I think if you do any research on the Ducks, you'll ban the Seraphine, right? It's, uh, they flexed it mid. They flexed it bottom lane. Uh, they've also showed that they're willing to also, yep, there's the other pickups, but it's <laughs> the Lucian, right? Those yep. are the two champions, and like if we watched last week, that Lucian, you know, was tearing people a new one. The Ducks were so mm -hmm. on form and on point uh, this last week that that's why I predicted the 3-0 if anybody saw on there. Um, mm -hmm. Tigers are also unfortunately playing with some substitute players into this into this uh, best of five matchup, so it it. it, it it all comes together as like, okay, this can be a 3-0. And this is the champion that you want to be one, right? It's Zarya. Yeah. Even after the nerfs, I believe that she got this patch, she is still very, very good. You pair her up with a Yumi. You pair her up with uh, a Lulu, which unfortunately is banned out here. But you pair up with one of the premier enchanters that are out here, she will tear through your team. She will eventually hit that two, three item break point, And she will just start zipping around and being super annoying and tear through your team. She's one of the hardest AA carries to get a beat on. Uh, but that is a good pick to pick around her, though. Very you strong can... pick. Yeah, yeah. And it also negates the Ari pick that might be picked out, uh, potentially any other mobile mages that we've seen. So I do mm -hmm. like the Vygar. Can also be flex bottom lane, which we've seen in VRD specifically. I've yep. seen uh, a certain team pick it bot with the Senna. So I, I would like to see a Senna locked in here just as a second pick because that mm -hmm. champion as well in the bottom lane is really, really good right now. Definitely. Uh, Renata's also still very viable. She's very strong and provides a lot of value. But one thing that's really, really strong here in Tazeri that I really, I, I gives you, you know, a way in, which a lot of teams have been forgoing, and it hasn't ended well for those teams, is the Nautilus, right? In VRS last week, we just got to see a Nautilus completely destroy a 5-0 Zeri by just, hey, you walk one pixel into range, one unit, have a depth charge, and have fun playing the game. And the Morgana's going to be grabbed up here for the Ducks, and that's very... You know, it's a great response here to this Vagar and this Renata. Denies a lot of their CC. But again, you only have the Black Shield on one target. But the Zinzad with the buffs, you know, still a very strong early game jungler who's allowed to affect those lanes very, very early and change the tide of the game. And that's exactly what we've seen this duo of Sloth and Neurosynaptic do throughout, you know, last week specifically. You know, they were moving around together. They got that first blood under the tier two, under the tier yeah. two at like Ooh. three minutes. Oh, but the oh, ooh dear. That is a that's a yes. big pick here by all yes. all trick pony. He's back, yes. baby. He's back. I love Freezo, no, that's my favorite champion in the game, right? Like honestly, Udir is my favorite champion in the game. I thrived. I love that Udir actually <laughs> meta. I still think he's amazing right now. He can still full mm -hmm. clear before 315. The meta has slowed down a bit. Durability is in. Like this champion is very, very good. Hopefully he's seen um, Cole Throws, who's on CB LOL, Cole Throws, uh, Udyr guy. He's the number one Udyr right now in NA, and he's got an insane guide. You build, you go lethal tempo, you go full tank, you go Sunfire Cape into Frozen Heart, into Force of Nature, and you just become this Phoenix Stance monster that can apply multiple Phoenix Stance procs with lethal tempo going on. So very, very solid pick here. Going to be kind of hard to pick against the Zeri and the mm -hmm. Morgana, but a very solid pick into Zinzao, right? Because at one point or another, Udyr just beats you, right? Early game, he mm -hmm. doesn't, but at post level six, once he gets his first item, he just starts tearing through you. And the Jinx mm -hmm. and the Yone being banned out from the Ducks here, do doing their research, good job. Actually, banning the Ilawi, so going for the favorable top matchup. I mm -hmm. think they think this Vigar is going bottom lane, that's why. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Yone pick definitely does lean, to, or Yone ban does lean towards this being a Vagar bot. And it, I think Vagar is one of the best autofill ADC picks you can grab right now. But yep. they're going to grab the Tristana, and that's still flexible. You can put the yep. Tristana in the mid yep. lane and the bot lane. So it's definitely perfectly fine picking that one because you're, you could still hopefully end up with a somewhat favorable matchup, though. I think Tristana is really solid into Zeri, though, you know. Punish her when she's at her weakest to end that early game. But the Orn can be grabbed up here, and that is why you ban Alawi. Orn cannot do anything into that champion in lane. She, I, Nara is not great into Alawi either, but both those champs, you know, very, very good at neutralizing lanes. Nara can win a lot of lanes and has some great CC, great team fighting capabilities as well. And with the durability patch, you know, he's also a better side laner than before. We'll see what they round out their comp with, though. It's going to be interesting to see what build this Gnar ends up going. And that's a Vlad mid. 
uh, just being slammed into the mid game or mid lane. Sorry. So this is a very mm -hmm. late game focus team comp, right? You have very strong top side, early top side, I guess, with the Nar and the Zinzal, but pretty much you're playing for that late game, 30 plus minute team fighting uh, mm -hmm. style. And Tigers have drafted really well, right? Vigar, Tristana, Udyr, late game monsters in their own respective rights. Udyr becomes insanely tanky, right? Mm -hmm. Just creates bear dancing. And they're actually going to the Thomas Kenshin the third, William Catfish, whatever you want to call Whoa. him. I'm pretty sure this is going to go top lane here. Yeah. Uh, into the Gnar. And so I've seen Tom Kench top uh, function in CB LOL recently and the Brazilian League. And it mm. has it's been having very mixed results, right? I, it's, it's good. It's tanky. But all it becomes is just a meatball, right? You really have to be on point with your consumes. Your mm -hmm. W engages have to land. Like, it is very difficult, especially into this team comp, right? If Tom Kench W's on to the Ducks, Sari can move out the way. Vladimir can pull. Nar can E. Really, you only have potential to cast Zinzao and Morgana. And then you have to play the guessing game on who's going to get that black shield. So it is going to be kind of mm -hmm. difficult to execute. I assume Tom Kench W, his engage is going to be used as a secondary engage, right? So you throw the cage around somebody, and then you W. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking the mechanical play is, but Tiger's coming out with a very interesting comp right now. It's very different than what you'd expect, considering, you know, everything that's gone on in VRD. But that's what you have to do when you have some newer players in your roster, right? You have to mix it up. You have to play mm -hmm. for, you know, weird cheese strategies. Well, maybe not cheese necessarily, but just different strategies that, you know, other teams aren't used to. And, you know, that's one conversation that I think a lot of teams, especially in pro level, have had right now, you know. When international comes around picking random stuff can work out very very well because a lot of the top teams are just not used to those picks and you know grabbing them up into the ducks who have you know gotten confident in their style this may be a way to actually you know push them out of their comfort zone they have nice picks that they're used to but having these odd picks that you're not used to seeing may be the way to win them and take game one yeah the beefy beefy team come up team comp playing out for the Tigers, right? They definitely just look mm -hmm. to front to back here, right? Tom Kent, Udyr, you have Vigar and Trisana pumping out the damage. And Dark Hugger's Renata, I think, is obvious. I think one of the best ones we've seen in VRD, right? I, think we, I wanted to give him, like, really, I think I gave, wanted to give him MVP one of the games we saw him play in the early weeks, where his Renata Qs have just been so on point every single time he was able to land the stun. Mm -hmm. And even his ultimates have been hitting three, four-man ones consistently. Obviously, the Renata ults are more impactful the more levels you get into it, right? Usually around the um, rank 11 or rank 2, sorry, level 11, rank 2 Renata mm -hmm. ultimate is when you start really seeing the impact because it ups the amount of time that they're uh, frenzied or berserked or whatever, or taunted, and they're hitting their teammates. You can start getting some serious damage down simply from just hitting that ultimate onto a Zeri, onto a Zinzel, mm -hmm. and just having them kill their own teammates. Very, very true. And... I think Renata just provides a lot of value, a lot of utility, and exactly what you want as, as that support. I think Morgana's very good at what she's good at, but doesn't really provide all that much outside of that. She has good CC, but it's not the easiest to follow up on. She has the Black Shield to prevent CC, but against a comp like Udyr, like Vagar, that Black Shield will barely do anything, because the Udyr could really, like, once that shield is placed, the Udyr just has to spam Phoenix, and that thing is gone in one auto. And you could also play around the timing as well, mm -hmm. right? Like, Black Shield goes down, you just target somebody else that doesn't have Black Shield. Exactly, right? that's they, true as well. Guessing game. Yeah, there is a guessing game that comes in with the Morgana. And like you said, she hyper-indexes really well into what she does. But other exactly. than that, like, the Renata's a very good all-arounder. She has solid mm -hmm. CC. She has a very te she's a team fight affecting ultimate. She's even got, like, a, a pseudo-revive passive. I don't. I, I hesitate to call it a revive. It's more mm -hmm. kind of like a, a zombie form, right? And then right. it revives you. And she also comes with a shield that is slow. Like she provides a lot of everything, um, which in some of these best of fives, and especially in Dog Hugger's very capable hands, he could he could really do some work into this lane. Now Karthik is uh, in that bottom lane role with the Tristana here. So mm -hmm. Tristana Renata versus the Zeri Morgana. So there's no odd lane assignments. It, every all these champions where we think we're gonna go, they're gonna go. Vigar's going mm -hmm. mid. Uja's going jungle. Uh, so I, I, I like Tiger's team comp, but I think just Ducks have been more on form. And I am going to predict them just for the, like I said, the 3-0. I think mm -hmm. they can still win this, even post-draft. Definitely. I think the Ducks are still a super strong team. And even with this, uh, you know, wrench thrown in their plants with the Tigers draft, uh, the Ducks still are just as strong as ever. And the Tigers aren't at their full form. But we'll see if they're able to make it work. 
in just a little bit as we get ready for game number one of the night. We'll be right back with the Ducks taking on the Tigers in a best of five for quarterfinals. Hello everyone, how are we doing to the first best of five series coming at you with the Ducks taking on the Tigers, blue side versus red, and first series quarterfinals, and it's do or die for both of these teams because they are in the lower bracket. This is not double elimination for them, this is single elimination. Every game, it could be spelled here, and so we'll see who takes it home, and so far, you know, it's just looking like five stacks for I, or yeah, five uh -huh. points for every team, five points for every team. They're just chilling. They don't want to. Yeah. They want to walk too far forward. That's how it usually breaks out in best of fives. So what I've seen is that first game or two, they'll five point defense, and if we get to that like fourth game, fifth game mark, or even third game, then you'll start seeing some like cheeky invades. You'll start seeing some like wacky stuff happening where five members go down to the bottom side or the bottom lane bush and try to do some crazy stuff. So I think five point defense is pretty standard. 
Uh, we mm -hmm. have some pretty standard runes across the board. It looks like All Trick Pony has been brushing up on his Udyr. Takes the Ghost Smite and has the Lethal Tempo. So he has been uh, ghost, uh, on, his, on his studies here. But mm -hmm. I think everybody uh, across the board just has some very standard runes. Um, I do like the Hail of Blade Zinzao if you're going for more of that burst, like instant kill potential. Most Zinzaos will take Conqueror just so they can last longer in fights. But I think he's going to assume that he wants to duel and he wants to kind of get these kills super early. And the Hail of Blade just allows him to get more autos off, allows him to get his Q off faster, right? Because it increases that. Uh, Ultra Pony going for an opposite clear. Got a full clear on the mm -hmm. top side, going bottom and not looking to meet Zinzao anywhere. But Zinzao looking for a level two gank already. Mm -hmm. And it's a great look for him to at least try and find something while he has that early game power. But one thing that we did see earlier was a ping onto that blue buff. So they don't know where it is, but level two has been hit and they're looking for a fight onto East Pit. He still has the flash, still might be able to find his way out. But the Event Horizon actually buys him a lot of space and a lot of damage, which means that the Zinzao's clear is not going to be nearly as healthy anymore. No, I'm not going to be healthy. Udyr can potentially look to take his raptors and just go straight into Zinzao's jungle to see if he can bully him out. Because Zinzao has to pop all his pots. He has nothing left. Udyr, on the hand, is full health uh, after he pops his pot. Going to see if he actually goes in and tries to risk invading the Zinzao on a, such a low health. But he's actually going to opt in for the full clear. Pings are going out um, on both mm. junglers, right? They're both pinging their junglers. They both know where, he, where each other are. Tristana and Renata are going to get natural shove onto this just because of Tristana's passive. But additionally, Gnar is going to have the push and the shove onto Tom Kench just because of that ranged form that he can abuse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going to conquer here on this Tom, or on this Gnar is actually pretty smart. Um, we'll be looking for the extended fights, but they find the root onto Dog Hugger, but can't really capitalize too much. It's some return damage going forward, but overall, just an even trade for the most part. Health bars are, mm -hmm. you know, looking as they should. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty slow, uh, I would say, early game for right now, just as these teams are starting to warm up. I mean, we mentioned, I think, offline that the Tigers went straight from, like, a 40-minute normal game right into the draft mm -hmm. as well. So, like, they're, they're, they're warming up. They're finally warmed up, and I think they're just going to try to take this game slow, uh, which is probably going to work out in the Ducks' favor because they have a Vlad, because they have a Zeri. These champions tend to scale super, super well. Their late game damage is kind of insane. And yes, Vygar has a lot of burst late game, but he's not going to be bursting out of Vlad anytime soon, right? Pool mm -hmm. is available. Zhonya's is going to be available. There's going to be so many tools to avoid this uh, Vygar burst, in my opinion. Yeah, Vygar burst is really strong, but there are a lot of tools to avoid it, especially, you know, with the Zeri. With uh, Nar, both have ways to get out of that Event Horizon port. Fully procs, gets that big stun off. But if you see this Udyr looking for something, able to get a little bit of those little Krugs there. And the slow was found, but they can't really look too hard. But look at that CS difference in the jungle alone. Yep. 10 CS up. That is so insane. But that's the power of the yeah. deer, baby. Yeah, and that's we see the god deer. Trades. <laughs> we do see trading, we do see some trading, and Udyr's just going to reset, going to go to his Krugs uh, and take that. And he's honestly, this is doing, looking really good for him. Zinzao's not able to get really any good early game pressure down other than that mid gank that didn't really surmount, amount to much. Mm -hmm. And Udyr is completely content on farming up, getting his items. There have been some buffs to tank items as well. They're cheaper now, uh, and they do a lot more. They're a lot more effective, they right? They give more think, HP. Yeah, they give more HP. So, I mean, Udyr is in a fine spot right now, and he has the potential to take this game over once the mid game mm -hmm. happens. Definitely. And even if the Vlad is fed, the Udyr just gets so tanky, it's hard to deal with him. Again, they're looking for East Pity, and the Red Horizon does not land in time. They find the knockup, the flash away, and they could look for a play here. Sloth has the pool, but oh, cannot Sloth. commit for any more. Uh, just tanks two tower shots here, and another gank comes out. They finally get East Pity. They get his flash at the very least. But oh, Udyr is here. Fight. East Udyr. Pity's taking so much damage, and he's able to get oh. first blood. Sloth PhD finds the big play, but Pony going in for the play. Ontario Snaptic, he has no flash. He's trying to get away, trying to run to those chickens, and he is able to, but Torchy's there first as well. It is a two for you. Two v two. They get the smite to heal up, but look at that damage coming in from all trick Pony, and that's the Udyr. He's too strong. He's too tanky, and he just does too much damage because he got the first base off yep he had he has the he has the he had bammy cinder to no items on the zinza right since didn't bank he did he did not have the serrated dirt there so that's why he was it felt like he was doing no damage against the udir a bit of a misplay coming out from torchy though he could have probably w'd on to sloth phd there sloth had no flash no ghost anything ended up trying to w onto the zinza just to secure the kill uh but overall one for one trade 
Soft PG does get the kill, and I think that kill is a lot more impactful right now than the Udyr kill, just because of ramping that Vlad forward can get mm -hmm. very, very scary. Got it. You gotta remember those Dark Seal stacks as well. You know, always, mm -hmm. you know, again, on Vlad, double scaling. You get more HP and you get more AP coming in from that single item. And every single stack just matters that much more as that Vladimir. And KL Paul getting a little antsy there under the tower, taking a decent chunk of damage. But Torchy is suffering here a little bit. But we do see some pings coming through. They are maybe looking for Kong, I'm calm, but they can't really find the angle. No, and they're gonna try to look for this dragon here. Udyr has a lot of priority, obviously, with his bottom lane. Vigar uh, TP'd back. Vlad has yet to back, so he cannot join this dragon fight. If he wants to, he's not gonna do a lot of damage. But instead, Altric Pony's just gonna say, do a dry fight onto the mid lane and say, what's up, dude? I'm gonna go and farm <laughs> your jungler's jungler. Jungle, yep. pretty much, is what he's gonna, gonna go. take that. That is mine now. You don't get to have that much fun anymore. I'm gonna be pressuring your jungle. I'm gonna be looking for big plays. And Sloth is actually taking a decent chunk of damage, but he does have the sustain available. We do see Altric Pony on those wolves, though, on the minimap. And the Zin Zhao is... Well, it should have snuffed this one out. Sus this one out. They do spot this Udyr, but he can just oh, run through the towers. He doesn't take damage. <laughs> He's just going through the towers. Takes the wolves and says, thank you very much. Quite I'm fine now. Are going down. And that is just the Udyr gameplay. That's, what, that's just what he can do. Smartly, though, Xin Zhao is going to go for the red buff of Udyr. So Udyr actually going to lose out on this trade. He's not going to mm. actually get... What he would like. Zinzo oh. has the opportunity to also Look at the take damage. as well. Taking so much force to flash. K.O. Paul Wait. taking these trade damage. But the meat, it comes through. The Kadav hour is there. But it's not enough. No, he's just taken down. He miscalculated the power of the shield because he's not in a 2v2 lane. Not in a 2v2 lane. He also ate three tower shots there. And I That's understand. Too. Yes. yes, towers do a little bit less damage. They did nerf it a little bit, but they still hurt really, they really hurt. hard. Unfortunate misplay from Torchy there. I understood what he was trying to do and what he was trying to go for, but just do, couldn't execute. Took way one too many tower shots, in my opinion. Doesn't get the kill on the KL Paul, and KL Paul trades that back. He's also going, Paul is also going the tank build. Double null magic mantle and the bomby cinder, ready to go. And I think that's all right. You have triple damage dealers on the side of the ducks, so it's definitely something that they could look for. But decent chunk of damage, they're also dog hugger, taking a lot, but. A beautiful handshake does push away Spectral. Yeah, and Dog Hugger is just really, really solid on these handshakes, like you said. Yeah, maybe getting caught by the Morgana Qs, you could do a little bit less of that. Uh, finally, Soft PhD has gotten to back, but they have to realize that Zin Zhao's up here. This dragon is going to be the Tigers instantly, right? Yep, the moment they see him. Right on a Torchy. He has no flash. He has no way out just yet. The shield, though, is going to be as massive as it used to be. An Ultric Pony ready on that dragon already as soon as they saw him. Yeah, gonna be a little bit of a later dragon, right? Usually you see the dragons taking around the six to seven minute mark around when they spawn, but this one's gonna be mm -hmm. about a nine minute. So we're gonna see maybe a 25, 27 minute uh, dragon oh. soul and he's pretty popular. <laughs> Just goes in for a little bit of a love tap, getting those stacks going as the Vagar. Exactly what you wanna be doing here, but Kale Paul looking for the play, uses the Gnar, but we're gonna go away thanks to Directed Camp and Torchy able to kite away from that W. And he's pity, you know, not doing all that hot, but doing quote decently. All things considered, but Dog Hugger made their way over to the mid lane. Not going to look for too much though. Yeah, he is down in CS. That's due to the kill that he, the, the kill that a sock PhD got, and also those early ganks that Neurosynaptic mm -hmm. put onto East Pit here. But overall, he's doing fine. We also have to realize that he has the the double stacking, like you said, he has the CS with the gold, but also he's stacking AP. And as if, if he's stacking his Q with the AP, and that's why his CS is low, then he's gonna have some outrageous numbers come mid game, right? Once he starts building, mm -hmm. he, I'm assuming he's gonna go Everfrost here, but he could potentially go, uh, uh, you know, Shattered Crown if he wants to be a little bit safe. Uh, if he feels like he's going to get dived on by the uh, by the Vladimir or the Zeri or the Zinzao. There's a couple different options you can go here. I'm expecting Everfrost just because it allows for that extra lockdown. Once you get the E, you can Everfrost, mm -hmm. you can W, you can lock all your damage down. Uh, but we'll see what East Pity goes here. Definitely. And, I mean, East Pity is not having the worst time in the world. The ganks have definitely sent him back. But... We did take a look at the gold charts earlier, and Karthik002 actually having a great time here in this bottom lane. Slightly up on CS, up in gold, the second richest, or third richest, sorry, player in this game. Actually popping off here, all things considered. You know, hasn't played ADC all that much, is known for that jungle uh, play. Yeah. And, you know, autofill, hey, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, the roll swap may have worked, or the lane swap. 
in this case here for Karthik here and putting Altric Pony on the Udyr. And so far, so good. The early game has been pretty quiet. I think both teams are pretty content, right? They dap they both have scaling options. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, both with the Vulcan and the Tristana and the Vlad and the Zeri. Uh, but I do just think if they keep letting this go, the Udir will just outscale uh -oh. completely. Is he going to go Paul. in? Blue Smite is there, but Paul finds a beautiful hop to get himself to safety, but he has no way out. No flash. He's taking so much damage, he's gonna get eaten. But Karthik taking a lot of damage. Or sorry, Tro Pony taking so much damage as well. Nar back into the wall, back into the TV speed. He's finally shown his face, but it's not really gonna do all that much as Paul dealing so much damage. Torchy's still alive, but there it is. That Sanguine Pool gonna find it, but no, it's that Boulder Toss that grabs the kill in the end, and they could look to dive this here. They have the health bars on Synaptic and on Paul, but they aren't gonna look for too much more. Yeah, it'd be really scary trying to... Uh-oh. Oh, another handshake again. Doghugger just does not miss. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Really good handshakes on their side. And unfortunately, the Vlad got the first roam onto that top lane gank. Torchy was also less than 50% HP, hence why that gank went so bad. He really couldn't follow up with any damage. Also tried to go with the W first. I think letting Udyr bear stun, then following up the W, guarantees double CC, guarantees the knockup. So it just, you know, these subs, this the synergy is not there. And you can see, mm -hmm. right, Trick Pony and Torchy just... They haven't played together. They probably aren't communicating that well. And you see misplays like that where the guy with the the not point and stun CC, quote unquote point and stun, right? Udyr's bear stance, you know, Tom Kench's W needs to land after the stun is guaranteed rather than vice versa. And that's just one of those mechanical mistakes that other teams probably don't make if they've been playing together. But at the same time, we see this bottom lane actually just going very well in favor of the Tigers. And, you know, the ADC that the Ducks wanted not performing as well as the other jungler, but Pony taking a decent chunk of damage from Neural Synaptic has lethal tempo, but Vlad is there for a Sloth PhD, look for the big play, but it's gonna be the Event Horizon that lands first. There's a lot of damage, the Berserk is there as well. They're trying to trade it back, but Doghugger's not really providing all the much, but a beautiful play from Pony, and the Triumph is there as well. He's gonna get Sloth for Karthik over the wall, and the revive might just be enough. One more auto will do, but they cannot find it. Karthik gonna get rooted up. They're looking for the play here, but Sloth PhD does find that kill as well. There he going for The cleanse has been used. East Pity trying to deal as much damage as he can. He, no primarily burst just yet. It's very close. Very soon. Flash over the wall. The slow is not going to be on, but a beautiful knockup is not there. And Torchy's trying to find anything, but the flash forward and the primarily burst finds the kill, but Renata's taken down on the edge. Paul has oh, found his way down in this fight as well, but it's just turning awry. It's going wrong, and it's gone all in favor of the Ducks. They're flying high. They're soaring, and Torchy's just not the game for him today. He's a little fish, and the Ducks are predators. They're going to take him down as well. Oh my, an extended team fight lasting until the respawn timers come out for the Tigers here. And a bit of a misplay from Karthik. He jumped over to try to confirm the kill, I believe, onto Camcom and Sloth there. But instead, had a perfectly fine Zeri Spectre right in front of him that he could have autoed, put the E on. So that's just target selection at its at its worst, actually. Attack Ultra Pony here, gonna try to stop the Herald, try to get the first charge off it gets it off get some plates oh no it didn't get any plates actually it was popped after the 14 minute mark dragon is coming up in about oh it actually is up for the ducks and the tigers and tigers are in no position to take this right now no they're not they're there first though but we see the teleport coming through camcom gonna take a decent chunk of damage here from east pity already getting chunked out right before this and pony doing a lot of damage but another handshake lands he'll snap to going in forward uses that crescent guard to buy as much space as he can finds fall cover first and Pony is gonna force to use that smite early, but he's still alive. Karthik. He's running away. The triumph is there, but Karthik trying to deal as much damage as he can. Has to jump over the wall. Sloth PhD doing a lot of work, but they cannot confirm that the kill onto Torch. He's able to walk away. The ghost is there, but he gets stunned and he can't follow up. He can't do anything. He is running though at the speed of sound. Karthik still alive, trying to run. But Spectral going for the exhaust is down, and they, it is gonna be a two for two. But the dragon going in favor of the ducks. Yeah, they're gonna get this dragon and they're gonna stop all any any and all dragon stacking that the tigers would have wanted to do here they're instead gonna take the dragon for themselves cloud soul is up on the menu and that is just beautiful if you're the ducks right vladimir zeri zinzal all these champions morgana as well greatly benefits from the cloud soul passive right you get that mm -hmm. extra movement speed that huge burst right when you pop your ultimate allows you to stick onto your targets very, very scary. Oh, oh. They are looking for the play here. It's a 2v2 Sloth going to be forced to use that pool. Pony look for the play. There is that blue smite down. He's stunned up, rooted up, and taken oh. down. The shutdown's given over to the Udir, though. And it should have gone a pity. 
Yeah, I would have just tried to give that over as best as I can, but maybe they were scared that Vlad would be able to get out. Maybe he had Flash. Maybe they didn't want counting summoners. Torchy gonna W out here. Paul trading a lot, though. Mm hmm Paul taking a good trade here, but oh. he's gonna get spit out under the In tower my... if he's able to get the angle there, but he has the Narbar. The Mega is available, has the ultimate as well. Gonna look for some decent damage, but it is just gonna be a trade and nothing more. Yeah, unfortunately, this Nar is not gonna do as much damage as, you sh as it sh normally should because of the build that he went. Frostfire, Gauntlet into the Tiamat and Mercury Treads. He's not gonna start hurting until a little bit later into the game. Gonna be interesting to see, though, since he built this way, he's probably not looking to side lane as much, wants to team fight a lot, which I think mm -hmm. is smart, right? You have your Vlad, you have your Azeri, you just need to be that beefy frontline tank that CC somebody the moment they get closed. You're doing a really good job. Zinzao going for the Halo Blades. I wanted to see if he's actually gonna go this build. It looks like it. Eclipse potentially into Essence Reaver if he wants to. This is a high, high damage build. If this Zinzao catches anybody, really, almost anybody on the Tiger team alone or in a 1v1, he has very high potential to kill. Yeah, and that's the power of the Zin Zhao, especially with, you know, the buffs that he did receive. He's stronger. He might be able to make some plays, but uh -oh. Penny's going in. Has the Predator. Sloth might not be able to find their way out, but it's going to be a 3v2. They're trying to escort the Udyr out, but the beautiful Event Horizon buys a lot of space. Neil Synaptic, though, is not going to be able to find anything. He's trying to run, but the Dog Hugger's there first. And, you know, Paul makes their way down, too, but they can't look for anything. They burn a lot, and they get nothing in return. Yeah, they burn nothing. They get nothing in return. They get, I believe. No, no, they didn't get any. They didn't get any summoners from Soft PG, mostly because he didn't have any here. Uh, Spectral did end up burning the cleanse at one point or another. I believe it was for the event horizon. Oh, they're looking for, for Dog Hunter, though. Oh, the Flash Root gonna hit a minion, and Pony trying to buy as much space. Another handshake lands against Loft Machine, taking a lot of damage. The exhaust is down as well. Camcom trying to kite away, trying to help and take oh, down Dog Hunter, but the revive this. is not gonna buy the time that it needs. Sloth. Finds a beautiful pool, dealing a lot of damage, and Spectral taking a lot of damage as well, but no, the shield bow buys the time, buys the health bar that Spectral needs to stay alive, and they can't do anything more, as they have to walk away and let their Udyr fall. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because, you know, Altric Pony had a really good game here, right? I mean, for all, for all, for everything that happened, right, with top lane kind of, you know, losing and collapsing, mid lane kind of getting ganked a bunch, I mean, he really only had a bot lane that was advantageous, he did pretty much all he could, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, it's, Udyr has all the kills right now, he's only really a tank, and he can't really do much if the rest of the team did not draft enough damage. It feels like Karthik and Pity are almost there, but they're just not quite at the damage threshold they need to be. And with Zeri just constantly free hitting, free firing in the back, you have a damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? You either focus the Vlad and try to force his pool out and get him out of the fight, or you focus the Zeri and let the Vlad kill you. It is very, very hard decision to make for the Tigers here, and unfortunately they don't have anybody that can deal with both of the threats simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, it all has to come down to draft here, right? But we see that Kale Paul finding a beautiful trade here onto Torch. taking a lot of damage. He's not able to walk away, trying to find the distance by the space. The shield is there, but again, the ground is going to be used. The Devourer is there, but Doghugger's there first. Forced to flash away. Karthik going over the wall, using that jump. But the Shirelia's Reverie is there to buy some space. But they can't really do all that much, and they only burn cooldowns and nothing more. Yeah, Kale Paul loses, has to use his flash there. So really good from him, understanding that Doghugger and probably Karthik we're on the way here. Camcom having a fantastic game on the Morgana 1-0-8 right now. And they've said it themselves, right? The yeah. Ducks have said that their bot lane is not a win lane kind of lane. They prefer, you know, honestly, to just kind of play whatever is they feel like playing. If they win lane, that's fine. But they've been winning games. That's all that's important for them. And it's been working out. I mean, they've, they're oh, playing. Oh, they're looking for the play on the pity. Oh, Pity's Pity? in a rough position here. It is going to be a 4v1, but the Event Horizon does buy a decent amount of space, and they're looking for a play Torchy on the top side. Torchy okay. does have TP. Yeah. Dragon's up in seven seconds, and they're going to look to try and rush down this Baron. They have a lot of damage. Oh, but they're not there fast enough. They're going to make it. No, they're they gonna can't make do it. it. They can't do it. They can't do it. Oh, no. Is this the play they're looking for? It's 7k. They're going in. Your Synaptic does oh, have a beautiful crescent guard, but here comes the Berserk. It lands onto two. They're trying to deal some decent damage, but Nero Synaptic is the one who's caught out here, taking so much damage. Finally shut down, but Zeri is there. Zeri is joining the fight, control. and he's moving at the speed of sound. Karthik trying to run for the hills. KL Paul tries to find the boomerang, cannot do so, but they find Doghugger in response. It is a one for one, but they stop the Baron attempt, and Torchy stuck behind enemy lines, taking so much damage. Central just autoing, doing so much damage, but look, he finds the Devour, tries to find the damage, and and he cannot find the second tongue lash, and Spectral takes the kill. 
And that was a ballsy Baron player, right? Maybe not the best call, but I understand why you did it. You see four bottom, you got to try to at least attempt the Baron. There was just not enough damage coming out from the Tigers there. They really only had Chisana and Udyr. And Udyr is pretty much a tank at this point, the way he built. So Tom Kent, Udyr, and, and Renato aren't going to be able to provide that extra damage you need. It's really only Chisana hitting it. And there was just not enough. They couldn't get the Baron down. I think within... 20 seconds they got it down to like 9k and by the time that happened Neil Synaptic flew dove in with the crushing guard and it was it was pretty much a, a one fight from there right you do you are able to trade one back but i think they went two for one overall yeah they did get something in return for that big play and stop the baron which is really really important it looks like desperation coming out of the tigers already 21 minutes into this game they saw an opportunity, they tried to take it, just not at those item breakpoints yet. The Zeri already finished the fan of Dancer Karthik, not there just yet, you know, a little bit behind in these gold numbers. Ducks have been, you know, performing very, very well. They're up 4K, and they are positioned around this top side because there's no other objectives available on the map. Yeah, this is kind of that point you hit in the game where everything kind of slows down, right? You're just waiting for objectives because of the durability changes, because of what happened, you're not as willing to go for these kind of turret dives or crazy picks or or, or, or four-man ganks onto somebody because it's hard to catch them out because they'll just most likely live if they have any sort of form of mobility or any form of, uh, you know, flash or anything like that. So going for these picks is a bit more difficult now into the later, into the mid-game stage, right? You just wait for the objective, take it, try to get a fight out of them if they can. If they don't take the fight, you stack objectives and win the game. Uh, so we're going to hit that point right now and... Ducks firmly in the lead, like you said, with about 4,000 gold exactly. And a lot of that is on the Gnar and the Vladimir, if I'm panning over. So, I mean, Ducks playing a very standard, solid game. Something I very much expected, a comp that I very much expected out of these guys. Mm -hmm. And the off picks coming in from the Tigers so far have not been enough. The Udyr has been performing very well, but the rest of the team has not been picking up the slack here. And the Ducks have just been punishing them over and over, looking for ganks in the early game, transitioning that into great dragon picks, into good fights, mm -hmm. and have just been putting on a great show here for game one, showing us why they went 3-0 last week. Yeah, it's pretty evident why. And they were coming up on really good form, like I said. Uh, they were playing some very interesting compositions. They played an early game composition last week and almost pretty much stomped one of the better teams in the league. And Neurosynaptic running out of the bush here, trying to look for some bush cheese. Dragon is coming up in about two and a half minutes. They could honestly, the Ducks could turn their eyes towards Baron. They can really go for this, start it, force a fight. That's what you want to do when you're this far ahead, about 4,000 gold. And you look at the items, you pan over, you say, okay, you know what? Let's start Baron. Let's try to bait the Tigers into a fight. Kill their most important members and then redo the Baron. Instead, they're just kind of waiting around, ping-ponging lanes. And if you're in the team in the lead, you don't want to keep doing this, right? You don't want to keep just shoving gold back into the team that has, uh, that is in the disadvantage. You want to make them work for every single CS. You want to make them work for every single decision and make them critically think, if I give up these waves and I try to contest this Baron, what happens? Will we die? Will we lose the game? But if you're just ping-ponging lanes back and forth, you're giving the team an opportunity to scale up, potentially get gold, and really get back into the game. Mm -hmm. If the gold lead does stay stagnant, you know, the gold percentage gap does drop over time, and that's something to always think about. As long mm -hmm. as you can maintain this small goal, or you can, you need to grow this gold lead if you're the team ahead. You need to try and, you know, limit how much this gold lead grows as the team from behind. And, you know, the Tigers are trying their best to neutralize this game, get their Vagar those stacks, get their... Uh, get their Udyr some items in the back pocket and maybe let the Shastana get some items as well, who's a little bit behind. They need to try and buy some time for themselves here without bleeding mm -hmm. out too much. They need to know what to give and what to take. And looks like Paul's looking for another player onto Torch, taking a lot of damage. And it's single man shield, the Nar it backwards towards the enemy tower. Torch is trying to find something, but Paul does not have the damage left in the tank. Yeah, and Pony and Torchy are not really going to get too much done onto this uh, Nar here. That build, he went pretty much full HP. There's just simply not enough damage coming out from those two members to really realistically punish Paul here. So mm -hmm. I think Udyr should just be looking to farm, looking to get some camps, like you said. Shove wave, split if he can. He's not going to be able to contest this dragon, which is fine. It is only the third drake. But once it's fourth drake, then we'll see. Will Tigers make the decision to contest it, or they would, would they want to flip it on Elder? Because they're not so afraid of a team mm -hmm. getting Cloud Soul. I, I would opt into giving up Cloud Soul if you don't have the positioning, right? It is just Cloud at the end of the day. 40 seconds left on the clock before that soul point does spawn up. I think they should just try and farm it out. Like you said, they just need to buy themselves some time first. They could give up the soul. That's not a bad idea. But if they can get these two items before the third items are finished, 
They are looking for something, though, on the top side. Torchy looking for a decent trade here onto Paul. And not going to find the stun, though. They are going to, you know, basically have a wet noodle fight, but we see the position towards this top side. They want to try again, trade the dragon for the Baron. And this time, they have a little bit more damage. And it's going to be the Vega on the bottom side here. And they might just look to sneak it or look for the play onto Paul. And that's what they're going to try and do. They find the jump, trying to find some decent damage, but they're not really going to do all that much. Mm -mm. And they're Paul just going to go with this dragon and get nothing. Yeah, he had flash. They might just try to attempt this Baron here again for the second time. But the first, first time they did it, it went pretty horrible. But they're actually going to go for it. Oh, pings are coming out. No, they get spotted out. They're, they, they're definitely the Ducks feet. know something is up. Vigar potentially could face check this dragon here. Potentially this is a kill Going onto this the play here, 900. They could look for the kill first, but it is going to be the blue side grabbing that dragon pity. Going to use that Everfrost to buy some space for himself, trying to run away. But Ultric Pony kiting away, dodging away from all those abilities. And it's going to be a 4v4 here. Paul trying to find something. He has the Narbar, but the Berserk is <laughs> first. They find a beautiful engage, but do they have the damage? Karthik gave so much damage. The pool maybe enough to take it down. Pony going to be taken down as well. Paul finds the Narbar on Karthik, and he's taken down as well. And they have nothing. It's a 4v4. It's going to be a 4v0 zero, zero very soon. And they're... You know, Synaptic wasn't even there, and they can just turn onto the Baron. Slot PhD with the house call onto Tigers there. Massive damage coming out from the Vladimir. Hemo play going in. Just so much damage. Tears through all the Tigers. This is the Baron for the Ducks. This could be the game ending push after this. So much gold in their pockets. 8,000 gold lead. The resets are coming out. They can 1 3 1, they can 1 4. That was just a beautifully played fight from the Ducks and specifically Sloth PhD there. Big plays made from Sloth in that back line. A beautiful ultimate found. So many members did so much damage. And all the players of the Tower Xs do would just watch as they fell. They had the members they wanted there. They had their, you know, they had Justana. And that was their main damage source. They had double tanks, but the double tanks don't really do anything when the damage is so far ahead. The Zeri's popping off. The... Nara's popping off, and so is this Vladimir, and they just didn't really have a chance to find the damage in return. The health bars weren't even remotely close. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Paul, I was just choking on water for a second. Uh, yeah, it, it, you're correct, right? It, it's just, it, they're so far ahead, the Ducks right now. They have the Baron in hand. They really oh, should do a game of the And they are surrounded, though. It's going to be collapsed here onto Karth. They're taking so much damage, trying to jump away, uses the... That uh, jump to find himself some safety, but Neurosynaptic is key. Going forward, trying to find as much damage as he can, but a nice Berserk finds at least one. Only this is out. Pity cannot do anything, and oh beautiful Nar finds three into the wall, dealing so much damage, and they're going forward once more, trying to find Ultric Pony, but they cannot do it. He's too fast, too furious, but Torchy on the backside, trying to fight Sloth, but he just cannot do anything. The Vlad is too fed, too far ahead, and they're going to look to grab up the tower, grab up the inhib, and potentially the game here. Two yeah. members are dead. Yeah, they get in the game here. It's just Karthik right now and some tanks. I don't know if that's enough. Spectral can keep hitting. Vladimir is also coming up soon. He's actually going to push in the bot lane, potentially look for that uh, double in here. But I think Ducks are, they, they want to go for the kill here. They could look for the throw. They're looking for the play here. Pony trying to clear up this way, but they find something onto Paul. But Neurosynaptic into the back line, dealing some decent damage here onto the Udir. But they can't really find the kill. But the Nar, what was that interaction? He finds two. But Alteric Pony's going to be using that revive from the Renato, but it does not do anything. And the Hemo Plague again finds so much damage. The exposure does a lot of work and pity. Can't do anything except watch. Can't even break the Black Shield. And they're just suffering here as their base is falling apart. Their base is in shambles. Their team is fallen and they're gonna grab up this nexus very very easily but pity might be able to find a return kill but remote overs is not enough and paul still lives it as the ducks take game one Ooh, and a convincing game one 30 minutes in 24 to 6 that's one zero for the uh okay yeah convincing win here coming for, ducks for right the now and oh there we go <laughs> I don't know the time. I don't really love Tom Kench, right? I don't really love Tom Kench. Yeah, it's it's the Tom Kench top, right? Lane, but the Ducks' mo is really mm -hmm. to win their bot lane, right? They play through Sloth PhD. They play through Neural Synaptic. And then after, when it gets to the mid to late game, then Spectral and Camcom really pop off. That's where they can show their gusto. That's where they can show mm -hmm. their specialty, right? And granted, I wouldn't really consider 27 to 30 minutes late game. That's like 
later mid game, but still that's where they start scaling. That's where they start really putting in the work and just an overall fantastic play from every single member of the ducks here. Mm -hmm. They put in the work, they put in the hours and they're trying to take what's theirs and well, <laughs> had to do it, had to do it. You, you, you set that up. You set yeah, that up. True. It had to be done. True. It had to be done. And real quick, though, we'll be heading over to a quick break as we get rolling here for game number two of the best of five series. We still have at least two more games left in the tank. So we'll be right back as we get things rolling. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to the desk. We are wrapping up after that game number one in this best of five between the Ducks and the Tigers. And what a absolute smashing of a game uh, game one was. Salt talked me through that one. It seemed like maybe the Kench uh, needed to be benched. Yeah, the top Kench didn't really look all that hot. It was okay, but it didn't really win lane and it didn't really do anything after lane either. Its roams weren't there. It didn't really provide all that much value. Although it did... It was somewhat neutral there for a while, but then eventually the Nar just started popping off, dealing a lot of damage, abusing the range. Uh, because that Tom Kench does lose, or doesn't lose his you know, durability as the game does go on and on, but the Nar just gets stronger, does more percent health damage as well, and that's really where you know the beating started coming through. At the same time, though, I mean, Sloth PhD was just always there when necessary, popping off, you know. The Vladimir just looked really, really good, and I mean... The bot lane did what they do normally. They lose lane gracefully and then pop off later. But, you know, at the very least, the Tigers still have some ways to look for this game. Their bot lane performed decently well, all things considered. But, you know, Altric Pony had a great game. You can't really deny that no matter how the game went. Altric Pony, I think, performed incredibly well overall. Yeah, and it's important to take those little victories when you can find them. And, you know, as, as the individual players get more comfortable then that's where the team can start to feel more comfortable and more uh, consolidated. But Shibi, I'm going to throw it over to you. Uh, you were discussing mid-game as well about the decision for Tigers. They had to either decide, do they want to go for the Vlad and commit the train to kill him? Or do they have to go for the Zeri, but then that leaves the Vlad open? And there were these hard decisions for the Tigers to make. They end up at one point going for a Baron. They then get caught out, caught with their pants down. And things kind of go from bad to worse there. Um, what what do you think strategically was kind of the breakdown for, for the Tigers? I mean, when you're put in a position like that, when you fall behind early game to like late game champions, right? Things like the Vlad, uh, things like the, the Zeri, right? I don't even say they fell behind in the bot lane, but just Vlad was popping off. He was doing so much damage. He was ahead, very ahead of the damage curve, right? He was shredding through the tanks like Tom Kench, like Udyr. And when you're put in the situation, when you're playing behind, that's when those tough decisions, those maybe, you know, decisions that, oh, we just go for the Vlad here, it becomes a lot harder, right? It becomes a lot larger team fight because you have subs in. You know, going for the Baron, yes, of course, it seems like the obvious play. Four people bought. Don't get me wrong. But not understanding your champions, not understanding your damage, that's a whole nother issue, right? They didn't have enough damage. I think it took, what, 4,000 damage in 20 seconds or something crazy like that? It took them so long. It allowed the Ducks to come back into the top lane, to wipe them out. And then just reset with the gold. And that's that's those decisions that the Ducks, when in the lead, are forcing teams to make. And those kind of decisions need to be constantly pushed onto the losing team, onto the team that doesn't have gold, because that can force a lot more errors, that can force a lot more mistakes. And in this case, force a team fight in the topside jungle where you lose four, the Baron gets taken, and then you lose the game right after. So a really good play from the Ducks. But also, yeah, it's unfortunate for the Tigers that they're just – there's not that much synergy there, and it's apparent. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Anything to add on to that one, Salt? I mean, he basically just said everything that should have been said, right? The Tigers aren't really there when it comes to synergy, and that just has to do with unfortunate roster swaps, unfortunate uh, role placements. So they're making the best of what they have, and you know, all things considered, they had a great early game, and if they can mm -hmm. develop more of a lead, I think they can actually push forward, but the Ducks so far have a good hold on the series, taking home game one in you know a very convincing fashion. They had the lead, and they played with it, and popped off with I mean, there's not much we can really say. The Ducks played well, and the Tigers answered when they could, but it just was not enough, and that just has to do with not having that synergy just yet, but maybe it will develop throughout this series. They have at least two more games to play, and if they want to win this one, five. <laughs> yeah, they've not got long to pull it all together, but I believe in the Tigers that they can get something done here. Mm -hmm. During the game, you guys are talking about the Ducks as well. I mean, they, they did... They, they did ultimately win the game, but they were, you know, there, there were times where they could have pushed their advantage, right? Day 9, he's a just a classic StarCraft 2 caster, and he says, when ahead, get more ahead. And it took the Ducks time to establish uh, pushing for more and more of a lead, but that's what you want to do in league. You want to take that advantage, you want to run with mm -hmm. it, and just absolutely prevent your opponent from, from recovering at all. But speaking of recovery... 
Salt Shibby, I believe we're ready to jump into the draft in a moment so we can see how the Tigers are going to be getting back up onto their paws. Uh, so, before we do, very, very briefly, I want to know predictions. Uh, well, actually, we don't really need predictions for the second game, do we? Never mind. We'll jump into the <laughs> draft pick. You guys have a good one. Alrighty, alrighty, we will be rolling very shortly and see where the cards fall. What will the Tigers be one? What did they have in the wheelhouse to grab as that power pick? Because they were the ones who chose blue side for game number two. And I mean, we'll see if the Ducks have the answers because I'm a firm believer that blue side's OP. Yeah, I mean, it's OP definitely if depends on if you play the champions that are OP, right? Like, mm -hmm. Senna's really strong, Zeri's really strong, Tigers could look to take that away, but it can be played around depending on the team, right? Because if you're the red side, you essentially go and say, you know what, we're not going to ban any OPs, we're going to force you to choose one, and we're going to take the two remaining, right? And the Tigers mm -hmm. have to adapt their draft strategy, and the Tigers have two must-bans, in my opinion. They're always going to ban Lucian, and they're always going to ban Seraphine. If they don't ban those, Ducks will always take them within the first three rotations, within the first champ rotation, right? And they won't let it get banned out in, you know, second rotation bans. So Tigers right. opting in to ban the Lucian, opting in to ban the Xin Zhao, surprisingly, and Ducks taking the Viego away, the Wukong as well. So they're actually banning... I'm not going to say Wukong's OP. He did get nerfed. I don't think he's as strong anymore. Still a solid late-game... Uh, team fighter if he's paired with a Yumi, but he's not like a must pick anymore. Right now, mm -hmm. I think the must pick champions are in the bottom lane role. It's the Senna, it's the Zeri, it's the Lucian. These kinds of champions are just very, very OP. Gwen as well to an extent. Yep. Gwen gets banned. And they do opt to take the Seraphine. Tigers didn't ban it, Ducks didn't ban it, and they're going to grab it. And I mean, I, I think Seraphine's just really, really strong right now. So much value provided in mm -hmm. one champ. Great engage. Great shielding potential, great healing potential, and decent damage. What more can you ask for out of a single champion? Yeah, and then you can be flexed into technically three roles, right? Bottom, mm -hmm. bottom lane role, support role, and the mid lane role. And depending on the build you go, you can provide, like you said, you can hyper-index into the healing, you can hyper-index into the shielding, or you can go that more, like, damage route, the half damage, half healing route, where you go mm -hmm. like the Leandries plus some utility. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Slamming in a very ooh, strong ooh. Diana Yasuo. Now, the idea for Tigers is to draft range. Draft very high range. Don't let Diana Yasuo even get the engage off, and that's how you counter this composition. What mm -hmm. classically you'll see is teams will try to counter Diana Yasuo with an even stronger follow-up, an even stronger death ball. That doesn't work. You want to draft range. You want to play the range game. You want to play anti-engage, and that is exactly what the tigers are going for they they lock in the vex a very solid anti-engage tool here mm -hmm. she provides a lot of value with she can engage as well she plays that role she's double you know she's a double-edged sword or not double-edged sword but she does two things very very well she's great at dissuading engages and she's great at engaging slash following up herself but the allowee gonna be grabbed up for torchy that was banned last game yeah, very bold to take that in the first rotation. That's really smart, smart though. That top lane in. You know why? Double melees have been picked up. Double melee top side has been picked up for the Ducks. They grab Diana, they grab Yasuo, and if they grab a melee top laner or, you know, semi melee like Urgot slash Gnar, the Alawi gets to have a field day up in that top side. They don't have the burst damage, and the Alawi is just going to pop off, use that. Use her ultimate and just deal so much damage. And since they're all melee, they have to be in range of her tentacles. But the Karma can be grabbed up here for the Ducks. A great support. Does good damage in lane. Provides AoE shielding. And again, I think Karma is one of the strongest support laners in the game that you can grab. And again, also flexible, just like the Seraphine. You can put that in the mid lane. You can put that in the top lane. Put that in the support as well. And sometimes, you know, even that AD carry. So, you know. Karma's really, realistically, a four-way flex. But we see it's just top lane bans coming through in the second phase. Yeah, Poppy being banned out is also a jungle ban, right? That Super is true, that is true. Dissuades the Yasuo, dissuades the Diana. Uh, Duck's gonna take the Udi out. They don't <laughs> want to see Optic Pony there. I agree, he had a really he good early off. game. Yeah, he definitely did pop off, not giving that over, taking out some of the junglers here. Tiger's probably gonna ban another top laner here. I would suspect they maybe ban out one of Ilawi's... Uh, Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser. Yeah, Mordekaiser here. I don't know if the Ducks actually play it, though, or if they're willing That's to play it. That's just a hard it. counter. It's the hardest yeah, it's counter a, in the game. It is pretty anti-synergy with the rest of their composition, though, That's right? Fair. Like Diana, Yasuo, mm -hmm. Karma, picking the Mordekaiser. Oh. Essentially picking it. 
So banning out Ash, AD carry slash support, potentially could be both of those. Maybe they know something we don't. Scrims have been going differently. I haven't really, I don't really put so much value onto Scrim because of the Scrim bucks. But is he going to take the dairy to do it? Oh, the scary dairy. That's a big pick, and it's Fares. It's one of the few melee champs that fares pretty well into the Alawi. But if she's allowed to get to that level nine breakpoint when she has that fully leveled up E without being behind, mm -hmm. she's in a much better position to actually deal with this Darius, who does have the issue of you know not scaling all that well. And considering the ducks have a run into you composition, the Alawi is very very valuable. She doesn't really want to look for fight. She wants the fight to come to her, and that's exactly what the ducks have drafted. But the I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how they play around that big pickup in the top lane. But the Ezreal is going to be, you know, pretty solid there into Diana Yasuo. Just easily long gets range. away. Arcane shift. And again, like you said, long range, low cooldowns is going to be able to poke out these this really, really short range composition coming in from the Ducks. It should be a Lilia. I think if Tigers take Lilia here, it'd be really smart of them. I, I would love it because the bowling Wait, the Lilia balls, pick is the turbo sleep. strong here. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna take the Olaf. That's fine. Ragnarok can be popped out. It could definitely mm -hmm. just kind of burst, or just sorry, not burst out in the sense of like getting bursted, but like obviously burst out of the CC. Can start hammering away at Yasuo. Wins the one v one. I would say against every single one of these champions because of how strong Olaf is right now. Mm -hmm. He is a little bit neutered in the jungle. I would say he's much better when he has a lot more gold into the top lane. Uh, but still a very much a viable pick. Don't know if I agree with the Kaisa. There's a couple other picks you could go, but it is what it is. They're going to lock in the Kaisa with the Karma. Kaisa Karma, a pretty classic lane. Going to see if they opt in for the more hybrid AP build that Kaisa is known for. If they're going to full index into that Kraken Slayer, uh, PD, uh, IE kind of build that we've seen Kaisa go. Mm -hmm. It's just a full AD, burst you out kind of, comp, uh, kind of Kaisa build. Definitely. And, I mean... You have Diana, so you really want her to be solo AP. So we'll see what the Ducks do end up itemizing towards, giving this Diana the potential to, you know, pop off here, deal as much damage as possible. But the main thing that I'm still worried about is their comp is very short range. They have a lot of ways to dive forward, but diving onto an Alawi, diving straight forward into an Olaf, into a Vex, I don't know how well that goes. I think it's very scary. But if they do get snowballing, if they do get ahead... They can definitely pop off. Yeah, the Tigers composition is very well drafted right now, right? They mm -hmm. have the heals, they have the sustain, they have CC follow, they have counter CC, right? If they and I also will go in, they use all their abilities, but then they get countered by the Vex, by the Seraphine. There is so much return damage coming out from the Tigers. Like you said, the Alawi Tentacles, the Ezreal Arcane arcane shifts and the uh, mystic shots and the ultimate right you have vex damage coming out if she gets a reset off it could be terrifying right mm -hmm. uh, ducks have a very one dimensional composition it's diana hits er yasuo hits r kaisa hits r and you just burst and kill whoever you can and then karma falls up with mantra shield so you can keep going that's all i'm looking at right now that's all i'm seeing uh tigers have various ways to play around it they can bully them out of objectives they can bully them out of their range and ducks may, may never ever seen engage this this game fully five mans if the if the tigers play it correctly mm -hmm. and i think having the go button though as the ducks it does allow them to have that hey if we if, even if it's not a perfect engage we can still look for the pick the tigers it's still they don't really have a super hard go button apart from the vex and even so a lot of their uh a lot of their follow-up they just have to run they have to run forward. So they are a peel back, stand their ground sort of composition, while the Ducks have to look to go in. If the Tigers play around that, I think they definitely have a great way to play this one out. Yeah, and unfortunately, we have a little bit of technical difficulties. The lobby that was made was not a draft lobby. It was a blind pick lobby. Don't really know if that affects anything. unless No, the, no bans, no pauses. No bans, no pauses. Okay, and there we go. I think the pausing is probably the most important thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. blind lobby, unfortunately. So they do need that custom game, that tournament draft game. So we're getting that set in. Uh, pretty much everybody, we know where the champions are going, right? There's no goofiness going on. So very, <laughs> I would say two very honest compositions, right? No mm -hmm. flexibility, nothing like that. They just want to, they kind of want to, you know, they have two different play styles, right? Ducks want to move forward, pedal to the metal, bash your head in. Tigers, much more willing to let you come into them, kind of, trap you like a spider's web mm -hmm. and then immediately counter engage the moment they can they're much more of a passive comp composition 
which mm -hmm. tends to favor these more later games, the way the durability is now. These more passive compositions tend mm -hmm. to do better. As long as they can get one or two dragons under their belt and stop the ducks from stacking dragons early, uh, they should be smooth sailing, and Tigers could potentially take the game here. Proactivity versus, you know, reactionary activities. That's really what we're looking for here. The Tigers have to react well. They have to react properly. The Ducks are the ones who are going to be the aggressors. They have to look for plays. They have to play them picture perfect. And like you said, later games favor reactions more than proactivity, uh, at least at this level. I think the team that has the, you know, the easier way to react will have a better shot because, you, you know, in this ELO, a lot of engages can be whiffed. A lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of mechanical mistakes. So being the ones to have to pull the trigger, they're going to be in a little bit of a rubber spot instead of the team that just has to press their buttons when they see something happen. Yeah, it looks like the lobby is being remade again. I think everybody's out of order right now, or someone's out of order. Um, but yeah, I think we've talked our heads off about these compositions, right? We're getting mm -hmm. into the spectator draft. Uh, I mean, really, like you said, these compositions... Very, very different. Tigers have the burden of execution on them, and it's going to be harder when you're a team that is playing with subs. Being the reactionary team, when you don't have a lot of synergy, when the synergy is not evident, can be a, a lot harder to pull off. And I would have ex actually expected the Tigers to pick a much more simpler composition, a composition that has very clear go buttons, but instead, they're trusting their mm -hmm. mechanical skill, they're trusting their abilities, and they're saying, you know what, we can play around this slam jam, thank you ma'am composition that the Ducks have drafted for themselves. Definitely. Uh, both these comps can work very, very well. Our execution is very important, but ease of execution very much on the side of the Ducks. But, I mean, we'll see if they're able to fly high once more as we head over to a quick break, and we'll be right back for game number two of the night. So you better not miss They only only get stronger With everything I carry up on my back You should paint it up with a target Why would you dare me to do it again? Come on, get your spoiler Hi, 
你的固执让我来守候，哪怕太迟也不想以后。就在这时，粉丝在打斗。I got the heart of a lion, I know the heart of you climb, the heart of you fall. I'm at the top of the mountain, too many bodies to count. I've been through it all. I had to weather the storm to get to the level I'm on. That's how the legend was born. All of my enemies already dead. I'm born, I'm ready for war. They know I'm ready for war. I told them. Child, you would wait and watch from far away, but you always knew that you'd be the one that would find the right thing. And you, you'd let go and I'd escape. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the best of five quarterfinals coming at you. Tigers on the blue side and Ducks on the red. Ducks take home game one. We have some cheeky shenanigans coming through from the Tigers. They're looking for something here. Yeah, they're definitely looking for something. And like I said, first game. Uh-oh, Paul. He's got a... Paul? Paul! Oh, the ghost is down. And he takes so much damage. He's fleeing. He has the flash, but it doesn't even matter. It's Karthik. Takes first blood. Wait, he had no flash. He had, oh, he had going no flash. Ghost, he ghost TP. With Hail of Blade. That's that's the Darius special. I was going to assume he was going to go flash TP. Or, or flash, flash ghost. ghost. Yeah, but instead no of for the ghost TP, that's a really smart. I don't know if that Great was Great punish. They, Beautiful yeah, punish. Yeah, if they saw the summoner spell, if they tapped, they're just like, wait, this guy has ghost TP. Let's just fuck. Let's freaking 
full send it top lane. Let's flip and go in. Let's fudge and yeah. go in. Let's go on this Let guy. Yeah, and full send gets the kill onto the Ezreal. Gonna be really nice. Ops into buy the dagger plus pot. Is that not a tier buy? That should have been a tier buy. Right. That very much should have been a tier buy. Get that stack and you also do extra damage to minions. That's a little troll, but it does at least let him have some extra tag speed. You know, again, he's, he doesn't play ADC much, you know? It's fine, right? <laughs> he gets to farm easier. <laughs> you are giving him way too much slack here, but all right. <laughs> Maybe just buys it for the sake of buying it. I would have loved to see the... I'm coping. Loved to see... Yeah, you're coping. You're, you are, you're coping right now. That should 100% be a tier stack. It's 400 gold for first blood, I'm pretty sure. It's yep. Easy tier buy. Even then, you just sell your pot maybe and go for the tier. Pot essentially. Wait, tier's four hundred though. Yeah. Tier yeah. Is no, it's just a straight so tier. Yep. Yep. Uh, unfortunate from Karthik here, and maybe not realizing the champion he's playing. Oh wait! Lack of great damage like said. onto Capcom. Oh my goodness! They are not happy. They're ha they're not having fun this time. They are kind of suffering a little bit more than last time. And realistically, this is not nearly as an aggressive lane coming forward from the Tigers, but they're popping off here. Mhm. Mm and that dagger realistically has provided zero value here in these trades, so it's I was just pure land the dagger. I was about to say it's the dagger difference right now. He right? has not auto once, or he has just pressed Q. So the dagger has done absolutely nothing. Hey, man, it allows him to hit the minions a little bit. Because yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. that push! Let's get that yeah, push! Yeah, he's the push, baby. He's pushing. Yeah, look pushing at that. the wave. Look at <laughs> Gets more autos in it. Oh, it oh look at him go. He's autoing so feel... fast. He's autoing so fast. He's popping off. He's going crazy. Okay, okay, Karthik. I'll cut you some slack. The dagger is fine. The dagger is fine. Should have been a tear, but okay, we're not. Enough, enough we're fun, not, we're Karthik. Not, we're not. <laughs> Ezreal's um, buy here. Jungle clear has been pretty standard from both of these guys. Full clearing on both ends. Olaf obviously going to have a better time full clearing, a little bit better, but Diana actually ends up, I think he got a better leash from the Darius here because I think Ezreal and Seraphine just instead of headed bot immediately. Went straight um, in. Yeah, Neural Synaptic got a little bit of better leash, so he gets that, gets that jungle clear. Both junglers opting again to, so to fight on opposite sides, not willing to flip the game on the crab here. Very smart from both of them. I like the fact that both of these junglers understand, hey, we're both farming junglers. Um, we want to hit our item breakpoints. We want to hit level 6. I think Olaf is a much stronger level 6 champion in the 1v1 against Diana here. Just because mm -hmm. he has the Ragnarok, he doesn't lose the armor and MR anymore. He's just a better overall 1v1 champion. So, you know... Both of these guys are doing really well. They're going to back farm their Krugs. In this case, both, yeah, both of these guys are going to go back farm their Krugs. Lanes are going to be pretty passive. The most action we're going to see are in these solo lanes. And even then, Yasuo Vex can kind of become a standstill just because of how the champions interact with each other. So mm -hmm. maybe Alawi and Darius can potentially provide us some excitement. These junglers opting into farm, they're not really going to look to gank as they were in the early game with the Udir, you know, Bear Claw stuff and the Xin Zhao early level 2 gank lot slower paced game and if that ends up happening i want to say the ducks have a better late game with the yasuo with the kaisa and diana versus just the ezreal i mean alawi i still think scales very well if she indexes into you know cleaver and sunder i think she scales just fine and performs the role she needs to so i i think definitely the ducks do scale harder but the tigers don't have a, a late game just to scoff at at the very least no, no, definitely, I do agree with you there. Uh, especially, I mean, oh my goodness, go... these roots keep oh. landing onto Camcom, taking so much damage here. And Pony gonna use that ghost to try and get in, forces the flash away, and they get some decent damage onto the pony, but it's not really worth all that much when you have to burn your flash for it. But Soth yeah, going in onto Penny, taking a decent chunk of damage here, and gonna miss that last, you know, Steel Tempest, but definitely winning out on that trade. Yeah, he's gonna just trade into then East Pity's having a fine time trading up. Going to pop his pots. He still has a biscuit. Still has his a potion ready. There's a one charge of his potion there. So he's doing fine. He's more than happy to trade against the Yasuo who went D shield and pot and is now taking the punishment right oh, now. Oh, but Synaptic, Synaptic here finds the finds the damage there, forces the flash away, and they burn that summoner and they can come back at level six. Really good gank from Neural Synaptic here. He's been doing a really good job getting these early ganks, getting these flashes off of East Pity. But now. So PhD and East Pity have a boat hit, both hit six here. So we could potentially see a kill from both of these guys. They just want to get this wave under tower and look for a reset here, most likely. And Sloth gonna, you know.
you know, try and block some wave push using that wind wall. There's not really too much to block from the Vex. Like, she has some decent damage, but she, until she really hits the full six and she actually has some items in her back pocket, she's not too scary of a champ. Her early game is her weakest phase, but when she does hit first item or components plus boots, she's going to be hurting just a little bit. Yeah, she's going to come back with the lost chapter, though, and it's going to be hurting a little bit. Neurosynaptic opting in for the dragon because they knew that pity and all, a trick pony reset. Very smart play from Neurosynaptic here, living up to mm -hmm. his name uh, with the big brain here. Gets the early dragon, and this is what Tigers need to stop. This was a six and a half minute dragon. That means you could potentially get a 21, 22 minute dragon soul here and if it rolls on the right soul it doesn't matter how good of a late game team comp you have if you're facing down a hex deck or an infernal soul it's almost done deal the ducks will win that those souls are just so strong and if the souls roll the white or right way it can definitely look good but paul hey, doing so much damage here over to torchy but no response Ooh. just yet coming through and definitely winning out on that trade is the allowee mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mainly because kale paul has not back yet, right? Is still sitting on the D shield. He's on my screen, uh, if I have that correctly. He, nah, he's still, still the D shield. The, yeah, he is just sitting on the D shield. No client bug here. So he, that's why he's going to lose that trade. Allow me back. He was able uh, he to get. Bramble. I don't think he thinks the interaction works as it, he thinks it does. But we do see Pony looking for the big play. Does find the smite there, but he has the Ragnar. He's going to uh -oh, look for the trade onto Neurosynaptic as well. And he is definitely winning out of this one. But KL Paul has already shown his face. Who's going to take it down? But Neurosynaptic basically just solo kills Pony. But a beautiful pull over the ball with the soul finds that one. But Sloth has shown his face as well. They're looking for something here. And Torchy does have Pity's a flash. Coming. Can't look for the way out. But Pity finds the play. Finds the ultimate as well. Dealing a decent chunk of damage. Finds the knock up there onto that. Allow it. But there is the soul. Ooh, and they find one. Out. It's a one for one. But it is going to be a two for one. Double kill for the Darius. And things just gone ha very awry for the side of the Tigers. Two kills going over the, to that Darius. The double dunks coming out from both top laners. Darius ends up the slam jam master. Double kill for him in that top lane. Diana picking up a kill and two assists. Overall beneficial trade for the Ducks. Gold lead is still very, very small. 200 gold lead. And that was that was a 2v3 coming out from the Tigers. And they, they end up getting two kills. Olaf was dead that whole time. And unfortunately... Could not win out in the 1v1 just yet. Hey, Karthik, uh, where's your tier, buddy? <laughs> this this we have to flame, right? Eight minutes, no tier. Maybe he knows something. Maybe he's going for the no tier Ezreal build, right? No crying. No, uh -huh. big boys, big girls don't cry here. And Karthik is definitely a, a fan of that. Going no tier. Yep. Opting in for, it looks like the Full Triforce. Tri yeah, just full send the Triforce first. Uh, try to get as much lane pressure as he can down. Does not care about scaling. You know what? We're just going to burst them out. We're going to try to dominate this bot lane. Uh, Very Chad move from Karthik. Get out of there, dog. Run, run. And Spectral doing a lot of damage. Forces Flash away. And Karthik is going to find some return damage, but it's not really oh enough. God, but damage on the beautiful turret. soul. Yeah, the soul doing a lot of work here. I'm going to Torchy just slamming that one away. And Kale Paul loses half his HP. And that is a tank Darius. Yeah, full tank Darius coming out again. KL Paul, you know what? I don't need damage. I'll just build. I'll, I'll build Bad Me Cinder on literally any champion. That is his motto here. <laughs> Patrick Pony's smart. He's going to see that Diana's bot. Take the Rift Herald and send it top. Because Torchy we has the has the two plates already on the top. Oh, lane. look at oh, the big play coming for. They find the killer instinct there, and Neurosynaptic takes the kill. Neurosynaptic oh, they could look the for Karthik here. here. Little scary position for him to be in, but the pullback finds him, and Sloth PhD has made their way up to the top side, and they're looking for something here, but they don't have the Alawi ultimate, and it's just barely not up in time, and Paul finds his third of the game. Third of the game on the full tank, Darius. You know, three kills on Darius, definitely scary. Three kills on a full tank, Bemi Cinder Darius. Ah, I'm not too not worried, scary, honestly. Not as scary. No, He's just tanking, he takes scary. less damage, but nothing else to really worry about there. Instead uh, of him being honest, tankier and dealing less damage, or dealing more damage, he's just tankier. Even with that kill, Alawi is still a solid 200 gold up in the lane. Oh, they look pretty. for Pity as well. They don't have the Oswald awesome ultimate. They don't have the pullback either, but they find the knockup. And they're trying to find Pity. And they, at the very least, they don't even trade anything. Pity had flash the entire time. I don't pity the fool here. Didn't have, didn't use his flash. Didn't want to use any of his summoners. Got green. Saving it for next time, baby. Saving it for next game, it looks like. Because he he's 0-2 right now. Doesn't want to doesn't want to burn his summoners here. Ends up giving the kill over to the Diana. It looks like, and right now, as you can see, the Diana and the Darius are really the hard carries right now of the Ducks team. But 
Ilawi indexing into that split push composition, the split push hole breaker comp. I like it. Not mm -hmm. opting into a 5v5 with the Ducks is the best thing you can do. Forcing one of their members away. If it's a Diana, if it's a Yasuo, if it's a Darius, whoever can think to stand up to this Alawi, this hole breaker, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be very difficult for them to stand up to this Alawi, especially with, you know, Hullbreaker is such a cheap item, already finished, right? 2,700 gold, that's cheaper than literally almost every Mythic that isn't a support one. And a beautiful pullback onto the soul. Torch is going to deal some decent oh, damage here. Paul doesn't and, win that, though. Oh, Paul does not win that, in fact. But Pony taking a lot of damage here, going to try and deal some damage to Nero Snapping Force, using Whoa, that play. Oh. But a big ultimate from East Pity finds Nero Snapping Force is the... Ultimate, but it doesn't do anything, and the dragon's gonna go over to the Vex. She steals it away, but they find the play onto Dog Hacker Karthik over the wall, gets away, pulls himself to oh safety, but Paul oh, gets so much damage on the top side. Torchy is a menace. I don't think this Darius can 1v1 this Alawi here. The main, the main point as the as the ducks win the team fight here. Lose the dragon, win the team fight, that's fine. Happens, don't get me wrong. I've had dragons and barons stolen from me as well. Happens to everybody. Okay. He's Taking a lot of damage here. Is he going to be able to find his way out? No ultimate on the Oswell available, but the towers still do hurt. They do a lot of damage, but they aren't going to be able to find anything else just yet. And Ilawi, Torchy's just knocking on the tier 2 in the top lane right now. You're going to have to send 2 for him. There's no way you can let Darius solo handle this Ilawi. He's going to come back with a massive goal. Finishes this plated steel cap and the Sheen in hand now. He is very far ahead. Very much so, and they're doing some decent damage here, but Nero Synaptic has shown their face in the middle lane, looking for something there. They find a decent play, but it's just dead already. Pony has to salvage whatever he can, but it's just not enough. The Ignite is there, cuts the healing, and it's a double kill for Neural Synaptic. Went to the bargain bin, couldn't salvage a damn thing, unfortunately, for Altric Pony and Pity there, and they are just losing in this 2v2. Why even opt into this? Oh, and 6 right now they're against so the behind. Diana no and the Yasuo. To. Yeah, there is no reason to play that far up. You're never going to win that. Yasuo Diana, Diana, the premier 2v2 composition, the premier 2v2 mid-jungle duo that wins almost everything. And now they turn their eyes towards the Rift Herald here. The first Rift Herald being taken up the game here, unfortunately, not going to be able to be popped for the turret plates. Torchy now relegated to the mid lane saying, you know what, deal with this Yasuo, because I definitely can't. Definitely. Torchy, realistically, is the only member on the side of the Tigers that can actually deal with this Yasuo. Once that wind ball is down, Alawi can just throw out the E, pull the soul, and Yasuo cannot do anything about it. He does not have the damage, he does not have the time, and no heal cut either because the Ignite was burned last time. So he just has to, you know, survive as well as he can against Torchy, who's having a pretty solid game here. He's gotten ganked a couple times, but, you know, great CS lead. Took first tower all on his own. Having a great game so far. Yeah, took the CS, took the tower lead as well. I believe he also has the most gold in the game right now, sitting at 6100. Second most, but yep. they look for the play here. Finds the soul, but look at that damage coming forward. That's a lot of work on the Sloth, and one more tentacle pop will force that soul to go back to its body, and Sloth has to run, has to dodge, has to play dodge simulator here. But Nero Synaptic looking for something here on the torch. He finds a beautiful pullback on to the... Seraphine, but the ultimate is there. It finds two. Cam comes caught out as well. There's Synaptic trying to run away. Uses the flash, but they're looking for Cam first. Here. Exhaust is down, and they're looking for Paul now. Beautiful ultimate comes in from downtown. On the Paul trying. Blast cone is there, but on the backside is Sloth. Karthik looking for the play, though. Looking for the damage. Pity trying to find some slows, trying to find anything, and Paul is able to walk away with the ghost. Walks away with the ghost, and this game is a lot closer than the, than the box score says, right? 3 to 10, but these teams are only roughly about 2k gold apart from each other. And this composition, that... The Tigers have drafted. This Ilawi is so strong right now. Neural Synaptic going in without Sloth, going in for the ER to try to kill. Now uh, it looks like Dog Ugger on the Seraphine misses, pays for it, regrets it. Capcom ends up giving their life away as well as Neural Synaptic. So they just lose out a lot here. And that's just a way to give them back into the game. Ducks need to slow it down, look for the right engage, make sure that Diana and Yasuo are there at bare minimum to execute that combo. <laughs> And unfortunately, Sloth was chunked out, had no way into the fight, and they still look for it. They opted in for something they should not know that they have no chance of winning. They thought their wallets were big enough, but clearly they weren't. And so far, the Tigers are putting up a big fight, even though the kill score isn't there. Look at the towers, right? It's two to one. Even though they're down in kills, they've already got themselves two towers down, two standing objectives off the table. And that's a lot of vision denied because those towers provide a lot of that. And look at the vision line slowly being crept up on the bot side. This dragon's up in 50.
Dragon's up in 15. It could be very detrimental for the Ducks to even try to attempt this fight, right? If they full engage onto the Alawi, all the tentacles into the Dragon Pit. It's going to do so much damage right now. Ilawi's best chance right now, she should be splitting top or splitting bot lane and then using TP to join. Instead, she's going to walk herself to drag. They could potentially win the team fight, and then she could TP top and push that down while the death timers are going. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a different play, and, I, and I, if that's what he's going for, I like the look. Definitely. The Alawi is positioning with the team, and it is going to be a 5v5. Paul is there as well. Rift Herald is going to be summoned up in the mid lane, looking to try and take down that tier 2. And we'll see who finds the first angle, who's looking for the big play. But we do see that they've rotated behind, but this tentacle should see a couple of them here. And we'll oh, see. We'll see. They're, they're starting right now. Ducks looking for this hard engage. Just after he's going to go they in. They find it. Beautiful Massive play. Massive combo. Back the combo. Instantly taken down. But Torchy's in the middle of five. Look at the damage coming forward from this allowing. But he's locked down, taking a lot of damage. Got Can't deal it back in return. It is not enough. Karthik going to get knocked up. Going to be taken down. Dunk by Paul, and this game is not over just yet, but at the very least, they get themselves a second dragon and take the fight. Nail Synaptic with the hugest of Diana ultimates there. Yasuo playing support. Oh, oh, and 12 right now. Just there for the damage. Not gonna pad his KDA. And that was the one thing you yeah, a great didn't want to do against the Tigers. <laughs> the one thing you did not want to do against the Tigers is group up, clump up, play the range game, find out where they are, Instead, they get corralled in by Paul, by Camcom. And on the flip side, you have Synaptic, Slop, and Spectral. The three-man roaming group, the three-man you know, wombo combo coming in and executing perfectly onto the Tigers. That's just a backbreaker of a play. Beautiful look, a beautiful play. And, I mean, Torchy was in a great position, but just could not output the damage. And it's just very unfortunate looks coming through from the side of the Tigers. They were there first, but they got caught out, they got looked, and they just weren't able to react in time. You see the flashes are up, the exhaust is up. They had ways to get out of that, but unfortunately just weren't able to press the buttons in time. So, so I think this is what it all turns around for the Tigers. Ezra has finally built his tier. The tier is He's there. Tracking it. The 18 minute tier is there. This is where the game turns around for yep. the Tigers here. It's Slot over. PhD though. Okay. You can't find the play, but yeah, the tier has finally been built. 36 stacks at 18 minutes. He's popping off. Oh, it's this is the turnaround right now. Uh, they're gonna look this might be the turnaround here. They're looking for Sloth. Uh, not really. No, we see the Diana already there first, and they might look for Seraphine first. Trying to find something, but Karthik's there. Look for Sloth. Forces the flash away from Dog Hugger, and Senior Synaptic finds that kill. Uses the wind ball, goes right back in onto Karthik, forced to flash away. The exhaust is down as well, but does not even matter. The damage is there, and it's just going to be a five-man rotation onto East Pity. Torchy's there. Hallbreaker is still alive, is still proctored. The damage is going to come through. The ultimate is not going to go wide from that Vex. And Paul oh, onto the backline as well. He's there. He has no ghost, but the pullback finds the dunk. Has the full stack there. That's a decent chunk of damage. The dunk is not enough to take down Pony, but that dunk is... And Torchy trying to deal as much damage as he can, trying to protect this tower, but it's just so scary. There's four members left alive. They've only gotten a Diana, and they can't do anything but watch. Yeah, Torchy's watching as his teammate dies. Really can't do much, right? Has to kind of force the split, but if he's forced to group like he's doing with the Tigers, he's not getting full value out of that hole breaker. Oh, Torchy. Maybe? Nah, it's just nah. not much to look for. Can't really do much. That's the one issue with Elawi is you don't have enough hard CC. You don't have any hard CC actually at all. To you have one off slow. To get a pick off. You got one slow and that's about it. You kind of have to hope that the team runs into you face first. And now the item breakpoints are being reached Never. by the ducks here, right? Two item Diana. Oh, two item. Oh, I thought it was going to be a two item Kaisa with all the gold. Almost two items Kaisa. Nearly an infinity edge for this Yasuo here. It is looking very scary. For the Tigers here, this composition that the Ducks drafted, it's getting farther and farther ahead. It's 5k gold now. And they're looking for Paul, though. He doesn't really have the damage. The Ghost is not there as well, but he's trying to run away, trying to do as much as he can. Find some decent damage, and the five stacks are there. Gonna look for the big dunk. He will find it, but the exhaust buys so much space. And Torchy, who's gonna grab this kill? Does it go to Karthik? Does it go to Torchy? That's the real question. It's gonna go over to Karthik. And Spectral tries to join the fight, but can't really do all that much. But Pony is the one who might be caught out. They're looking for the re-engage, but he has that ult. The Ragnarok is buying so much space, but the ultimate's canceled by the wind wall from Sloth. And they're trying to deal as much damage as they can. East Pity goes in, finds some decent damage, but Karthik. Oh! 
Oh, he's caught out. Gets low on, but he can't confirm that kill. Spectral is going to confirm that one, though. And Torchy's trying to run for the hills, trying to get out. But he flashes forward, tries to find Synaptic, but he can't do it. The Sonius is there. Sloth dealing as much damage as he can, and they grab it. And they're going to grab the Baron as well. The Ducks must be led by Nobunaga himself as they tear and shred through the forces of the Tigers here. A clean ace and a nice Baron to top it all off. This game is looking shades of the first one. Baron and now potentially the reset into the game ending push. Uh, it's, the Death Timers aren't really all that high. They are up and they're going to try and run for this dragon here. They could use this Baron to push these waves and look for the dragon potentially, or just push some towers down. I mean, they are still, they're basically tied with towers. They've gotten themselves one Baron, but this dragon is up in just a little bit. And this is going to be a really important fight them, for them. Getting that soul point will just allow them to get that scale or scale up as they want to, right? I mean, at this point, they don't even have to scale up. They're sped, they're strong, they're popping off. Yeah, that's an IE on the Yasuo right now. PD finally finished for the Kai'Sa here. Any fight they take, they can literally take a 4v5, 3v5. It doesn't matter. They are just so strong with this Wombo combo. Oh, they find the pull over the wall with the soul, but they can't really commit all that much. Torchy's trying, but it's just not there. The Alawi may be the Kraken Priestess, but getting slayed by the Kraken so far. At least the Kraken Slayer from this Kai'Sa. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Pretty good. No, I know one. Kraken Slayer into the Kraken Priestess as the dragon is coming It's up. just gone. Uh, it's not. It doesn't even yeah, matter. It's up. It's up and it was gone. Oh, they're trying to find something. Beautiful knock up there on the soft PhD, but beautiful play. From Wait a minute. Torchy. Look at the damage. He might be able to turn it. And the slow is there. But a beautiful ultimate comes through from the same thing. They find three. Pony's on the back line. Uh, they at least grab one. Sloth is still alive. Pony yep. trying to deal as much as he can. Trying to do something. Karthik looking to find the play. Can he do it? He cannot, but they're looking for this Diana potentially. If they can grab a slow, if they could grab anything, but they just cannot do it. And this Diana is just allowed to walk away. Yeah, Slot PhD kind of baits his team a little bit. I don't know if you just go for the all in on the Alawi of all individuals. They end up trading one for one, top laner for top laner. So good trade, I guess. They, they're they looking to maybe crack the base here, but Spectral is pretty low right now. He needs to get some EH, uh, HP right now. 7 0 4 on this Kaisa doing fantastic. Um, but yeah, a bit of a head scratcher play. Maybe they just got a little too antsy. Oh no, oh, the place down on the dog already just dead. instantly taken down by Sloth. And they could just turn this into whatever they want. And just get the mid lane turret here. Baron minions are coming up. There's nothing you can do. Uh, you gotta back up. They gotta back up. They're gonna use that arcane, or sorry, the true shot barrage to try and break the wave, but the cannon's still hitting. Torchy can't find the damage, and he's taking so much. The tower's gonna go down. Sloth BHD finds the damage on the other forces. The flash doesn't even matter. He is gone. He is dusted, and so is Alawi. And they're doing the damage to Pony as well. This Olaf is just not doing anything this game. The reckless Viking is definitely playing reckless this game, and this game is looking pretty Ooh. over. Yeah, Vex and Seraphine are the only ones up. They can definitely go for the game ending push here. Four health bars, pretty relatively high for the Ducks here. Will they play it safe or will they go for the throw? Will they go for the juggler assault? They could go for the juggler. They're looking for Seraphine already. Doghugger finds the exhaust, doesn't take that much damage. Was Spectral dies on the back line, finds that killer instinct, finds the damage, and they're gonna just look to find the towers. And there's not really anything they can do. They don't have the defense. The Vex has the ultimate, has to look for the play, has to look for something right here, right now. Karthik can't get pulled back. They're trying to find it, but it's over too fast, too quickly. And the Ducks, again, they take game two. Too fast, too furious. The game is over in the blink of an eye, unfortunately. Ducks, another commanding game. 24 minutes now. Almost 29 to 6 box score. Uh, that Ducks 3-0 prediction looking mighty fine right now, so... Oh, it's looking very, very good right now, Shibby. Oh my goodness. The Tigers are kind of struggling here. I mean, again, the ball lane did pretty well in lane, right? They were looking pretty solid. And, you know, <sighs> Torchy put on a show, but Pony and East Pity just did not show up for the second game. Yeah, really, really unfortunate, right? I mean, the 2v2, the mid-jungle 2v2 has been phenomenal from both Slotch PhD and Neural Synaptic here. They've really been kind of running the gambit uh, these last two weeks, I would say, and they're showing their form, right, right now. I mean, they're mm -hmm. just beating, they're just outright beating the Tigers' mid-jungle uh, duo. Granted, it is a new mid-jungle duo, and they do have a sub, but, I mean, just opting into these fights, thats you don't need Synergy to understand that you're not going to beat Diana Yasuo. You have to mm -hmm. play for the range, you have to play for these team fights. And like I said, it's a harder 
composition to execute if you want to play around that range. Multiple times they just got they just grouped up and let Diana Yasuo combo them. Like it was just yep. near the dragon, near the mid lane, near the top lane river. Like it was multiple times they got combo. They just simply did not respect the distance, and that's what you get. That's what happens when you when you don't play around that range and. Ducks have showed very good flexibility in their compositions, right? They played a late game with the Vlad, the Zeri. Now they play a, a, a death ball early mid to get, early to mid game composition with the Diana, with the Yasuo. The comp flexibility from these guys have been phenomenal coming into these weeks, and it's they're looking like a very, very strong team, uh, potentially looking to 3 0 the Tigers here. Definitely. They're on track to do so, though. Momentum carrying over. They're going to have another 3-0 week. And speaking of moving on to next week, we're moving on to a quick break as we get things rolling for game number three of the night. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the desk after that resounding game two in our best of five series. Salt, Shibby, this could be a quick one. We could be going to a quick 3-0. The Ducks looked fantastic in that last game. The Yasuo-Diana super combo, the super team, that looked well rehearsed. They looked like 
synchronized swimmers or ice skate partners or something. They were just so <laughs> well synchronized. Shibby, talk to me about that Diana Yas combo. Yeah, I would say 95% of their engages were on point. There was one engage in the bot lane river. I will I will pick on the ducks for this, that Neurosaptic went super deep. They ended up losing the fight. Uh, he went by himself, tried to go for the Seraphine. But other than that, yeah, every single engage, like you said, synchronized swimmers, whatever you want to call them, uh, yeah, they looked very on point. This looks like a comp that they definitely practiced. Granted, it's not the hardest to execute, but you still need to, you know, press the buttons. You still need to put your fingers on the keyboard. You still need to communicate when you're going in. So, like I said, the comp flexibility from the Ducks is some of the best I've seen in VRD. I will, hopefully, I'll get be able to chance to watch the VODs or look at something from the Guardians Unicorns game that's also happening right now. But, I mean, the Ducks, they are just, they are, they are showing a lot of flexibility. And it can be a scary matchup for either of those two teams in the top, top bracket to get knocked down lower. Like, Ducks, Ducks can take it. They definitely can take it. I mean, they are on the way to doing so already. They're looking really, really solid. I think the biggest barrier for them right now would be the Unicorns. The Guardians are off their game. They're not looking all that hot. So I don't know how they're performing right now, mind you, but we'll see. We'll see very shortly. However, they still have to focus on this last game, draft well, and take it home. And, you know, sometimes the simplest compositions are the way to win the game. That's exactly what they did. They pressed their R's. You know, the Wombo combo, Diana Yasuo duo, just popping off. And, I mean, the Ducks are very good at that. But they're also very good at different styles, too. We saw them, you know, early, earlier. Game one, very scaly. Game two, all in, baby. They're looking for the big plays. And, I mean, that's super exciting. Although game one was interesting, I think game two was a lot more fun to watch. Yeah, it's those it's those big wombo combo kind of moments, those big big engages that you get to see uh, with that Yasuo, with that Diana that we got to see. Though the Tigers, they were really trying the Alawi in the top lane, really doing a decent job combating that Darius. Um, mm -hmm. It was definitely a good effort from the Alawi, but it seemed like there were it just like wasn't enough to combat the difficulties in the mid and the bot. We saw like Ezreal with the maybe misplay in some of the build order, but then at the same time, Darius on the side of the Ducks had a few misplays in maybe the build that they went for. They they were ahead, I believe, in kills at one point, going for a very defensive build as well. So it was like a bit of a mix up here from both sides. Um, yeah, so why don't you kind of talk me through some of that? So uh, the Darius build... I mean, if he wants to be a frontliner, it's fine, but he got a big lead and just didn't do anything with that lead, to be honest with you, until teamfights started coming through and, you know, the Diana Yasuo sort of just pulled them over the finish line, realistically. Uh, but, I mean, I think it would have been scary if the Darius went, you know, either Triforce or, um, you know, Strybreaker slash Gore Drinker into this Alawi. He would have just been able to win lane and, you know, the Alawi was the biggest threat by far and the way he specced wasn't, the way to shut down the Alawi per se, but it was the way to deal with the rest of the team. So as a team fighting build, I think it's great, but as, or not great. I think it's okay. Not the best, but as an Alawi answer, it is kind of the worst thing you ever could have built there. But I mean, that's not what he was playing for, right? The Alawi really didn't get the chance to split push and that build was able to take effect. So it was a blunder, but not the biggest blunder in the world. I mean, the, I think the biggest blunder would have just been AP Darius, but you know, did not happen. <laughs> AP Darius. Uh, no AP be... scaling. He would have had to rely solely on spells to apply Leandries or something. Now that would be a BM kind of build there. Uh, but yeah, it should be from you. Anything else from that game that really uh, captured you, that really brought you in? The, the Tigers, I felt like they they didn't quite have what it took there in that game um, going up against the Ducks. And, and they're in this difficult position now. Now they've got to try and reverse sweep. What do you think about that, Shibby? Backs are against the wall. Leave it all out. You know, uh, you know, sports saying, right? Leave it all in the field. In this case, leave it all out on the rift. Don't go home, you know, thinking that you couldn't pick a champion or you just should have picked a different champion. If you've got something crazy, if you've got some pick that you want to play into, I say play it now because you're 0 2. You got to grab a win. You got to grab some momentum. You got to force the Ducks to respect you one way or another. Yes, you can go a simple composition, but right now, you try to face them straight up. You try to counter them with compositions. Right? You've done multiple things. I think now you just you just bring out the most innovative, crazy picks that you can and really look to throw the Ducks off. Get, they get the game on the board, get a point on the board, get the momentum going, and force Ducks to rethink their strategy. Because right now, 
it's very easy what they're doing, right? They sack one lane and they draft super hard, super strong or super hard for two lanes. Game one, it was their bottom lane. They didn't really care about it. They would play through their top mid and jungle. Game two, they clearly were not worried about Darius. They said, you know, go build tank. We have we drafted Diana Yasuo. We've got this composition going. We've got Karma in the bot lane. Like they very much were gonna play for the mid jungle duo to snowball their bot lane and then go and take dragons, go and take team fights. So you really just like understanding what the ducks are going for and trying to counter that you can try that or you can just try to play your own game and play super aggressive play your picks and i think that's how you get on the board mm -hmm. yeah i i think maybe maybe okay what do you guys think hear me out right so mm -hmm. tigers you want to see something different okay so what do we do maybe our best advantage to try and win here is to back door we take tf or, uh, yeah, Twisted Fate, we take Evelyn, we take Rengar, we take Kha'Zix, something else. We just hide. We just hide. They go, wait, is this like, is this a bot game? Where's the enemy? Boom, we're in your Nexus. That's where we are. What do you guys think? Uh, no, don't, don't answer. Don't, don't answer that. Uh, I think, I think, <laughs> I'm not going to get invited back here, am I? I'm not going to get asked back to come cast. Hey, it can work. You know, yeah, I, love it. I loved it because he said, "Where are they?" Like, it's that meme with John Travolta. He's like, yes. "Guys, what are they supposed to be an enemy?" <laughs> no, I love uh, it. the invisibility <laughs> composition, the submarine comp. I, yeah. mean, I don't know. At this point, at this point, throw anything that sticks against the wall, right? For the Tigers, mm. oh, two, just play what you want to play don't play mm -hmm. something and go back home and regret it and say you know what don't go into banter chat saying you know what if this and this and this didn't happen we would have won i don't want to see that either lose lose and go out in a blaze of glory or lose gracefully i don't i don't yeah. i don't want to see i don't want to see some like excuses that's all i'm all for that and chat we are going to be jumping over to the draft in just a minute. But as should be mentioned, the Discord, come join us. Exclamation mark Discord in the chat. You can come join uh, the server. Check out the banter chat. See all the teams and the players and stuff. Talking smack on one another and having a good time. Uh, of course, make sure you follow the channel. And check us out on Twitter. Stay tuned. We have lots more of events like this all throughout the week. So make sure if you're into your League of Legends competitions, into your League of Legends content, that you're following the channel here. But without further ado, we're going to jump into the draft of game three in this best of five between the Ducks and the Tigers in this quarterfinals. This is Tigers on the line. Let's see if they can do it. Yep. And with that, the Ducks' first pick, Cam Calm's signature Lulu. We've seen that pick a lot. I bash it in lane all the time, but I think the durability bash definitely did help her out quite a bit. The Lulu is a great pick now. It provides so much value. A decent amount of CC, but mostly that shielding and just the ability to save the carry. Great work there, but they're grabbing the Xin Zhao and the Senna here. Two really strong picks growing for the Tigers. Finally. There we go. There's the first Senna we've seen all series. Yeah, and Senna is probably the most broken... 80 carry in the game right now can really match up well against those enchanter bot lanes you can play it fasting you can play it pseudo fasting where you give the the cs in the beginning and then you start farming later on you could play it adc if you want like there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to play and what you want to pair it up with lulu jarvin being taken I, am i going back to like last season jarvin zinza all these early game champions being picked up no udir ban nothing coming out tigers opting in the ban Probably the three champions you need to ban against the Ducks, right? The Zeri, the Seraphine, the Lucian. Ducks banning Viego, uh, Gwen, and Wukong. So junglers and top laners here. Uh, it, I mean, Ducks have a bevy of choices. They can lock in their AD carry, lock in the Cogba if they really want to. They can lock in their mid laner. Uh, I suspect they're going to pick their AD carry here. Oh, actually, they're going to the top laner. Nar. Wow. Yeah. And we're going to see another full tank Nar coming out from the Ducks top later here. Uh, full frost for, Frostfire Gauntlet, right? I mean, K KO Fall is, is just a full tank machine, right? Give me any champion, I'll build Bami Cinder on it. Yep, and the Yone gonna be grabbed up here for the Tigers. Also gonna ban away the Kog'Maw, denying the Kog-Lulu combo. And I mean, we'll see what the Ducks are gonna ban away. They're gonna take get rid of that Vex. Did not have the greatest showing last game, but is still a lane neutralizer in that respect. And we'll see what the Tigers are gonna opt for here. But all things considered, you know, I think the Ducks have a really solid composition. They have great CC, they have great lockdown, great engage potential, and they have, you know, good shielding and good peel. 
Yeah, I'm gonna see what the ducks rounded out with, right? Bans going into the mid lane, making me assume that they think this Yone is gonna go top into the hands of the Tiger's top laner here. Zinzal Senna is no slouch though. Senna is gonna start doing a lot of damage. She gets a couple souls, she gets a couple stacks going, and she's gonna start carrying to your team with a million range. Tiger's banning out more hyper carries. Uh, Jinx and the Kogba here. Tom Kench being banned out as well from the ducks. Yep, very interesting bands to see, but what are the Tigers going to blind pick? What are yeah. they going to blind pick? Senatom is a great ban. But Tigers, 10 seconds on the clock. What are you going to grab up here for yourself? Coming forward. I mean... That? Choga? This... Choga? Senna Cho? Cho? Senna Cho. Senna Cho. Very, very good. It's going to be Senna Nautilus. That's not bad. It's not great. It looks like it's going to be at 80 carry Senna then with the Nautilus support mm -hmm. here. Yeah, Senna does fine with gold. I think she really, does really well. Her soul stacking isn't as much, one of her core mechanics, but, you know, with items, with gold, she can start hurting your team. She can start really putting in uh, damage onto your team with the extended range, with the rapid fire cannon and the Qs and everything like that. Uh, Ducks could just answer with the hyper carry. There is still a couple on the board here. I would say Tristana. I would say oh, even oh. Ooh, Akali being locked in. From Sloth? That's scary. Yeah. Sloth Akali is definitely a monster. Uh, what are they going to round out with this pick? This final composition, the bot lane. What are you going to take as 80k? Aphilios? Like, you could go Aphilios if you want. Not in the best spot right now. You could go Varus, can go MF. Uh, Varus is really good on hit variation with the Lulu here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just waiting down to the last second. Oh, Zaya. Zaya's pretty solid. I like mm -hmm. her three item spike, right? She goes Essence Reaver. She goes, uh, uh, you could go the Eclipse Essence Reaver build, or you can go this traditional AD carry build uh, with the, you know, just a three item crit, Kraken PD into the IE, which is going to work really well with the Lulu. So, solid, solid pick. Allows for the dodge as well from the Nautilus R. You just R his R and it's game over, unfortunately. You can't really do anything after that. So, really nice, solid pickup from the Ducks here on the Zaya pick. Tigers have to round out their composition with their mid laner or top laner, Zalandra. And that's a great way to lock down the Akali, right? Keep her in one place, maybe you'll be able to burst her down, but I mean, real they have high damage from the Senna from the Yone, but they're very, very lacking with magic damage. And this Gnar, who builds full tank every game, is gonna be a happy camper. And we'll see what this Jarvan does end up opting for. But the Tigers, they have great scaling, they have a good mid game, and they have a decent early game. But, you know, the Senna doesn't really follow very well with the comp that the Tigers have drafted up. The, every single one of their champs is a diver apart from Senna herself. She at least has some follow-up there with the Dawning Shadow. But the Ducks yeah. here, they have great anti-dive. They have a Zaya. They have a Lulu. And the Gnar as well can also play that Peel Duty too. So I think the Ducks have drafted themselves a composition very similar to what the Tigers did in game number two. And we'll see if they're able to execute on it better. Yeah, with like a kind of a keep away composition, dance around the range, and yeah, Tigers kind of <laughs> drafted a full send composition. A lot easier to execute, right? Yonar, mm -hmm. Lissandra R, Zinzao E, like it all makes sense, right? You have multiple go buttons, multiple flank angles if you'd like, and Senna, like you can, can support with the long range cues, with the long range ultimate, right? Global ultimate in this case, right? With the shield and some damage. So Senna, definitely not the linchpin or the center point of this composition composition just a really strong champion overall good that you want to pick it up and not give it away to the ducks here um tigers looking to actually have some success on the Zinzao, similar to the duck success in game one uh potentially looking to get level two level three ganks off onto the akali onto the gnar but it's going to be really difficult see if yon can deal with the gnar right yasuo yon kind of seen a soft counters into this champion because of the range right you can negate it with the in this case Yone's E, where he becomes into the spectral form or the shadow form, and goes in and just launches himself at the Nari here and trades a bunch of damage back. But the Ducks, clearly their priorities are, we're going to play for mid, we're going to play for bot, we're going to let Nar do Nar things and build full tank. And again, they've just, like they said, they've they've sacked one lane and they've picked two carry lanes, and it's been working out so far for the Ducks. Mm-hmm. I mean, they know what they're for, and they've been playing that style very, very well. I mean, throughout the past two weeks, they've looked really solid, and, you know, Pulling this momentum, they've drafted the same thing for the past two weeks, and it's looked amazing. The Ducks are on fire, and the Tigers are looking to try and be the team to put out that flame, but so far, they haven't been able to do so. It's been convincing every single game from the Ducks. They've taken these Ws very, 
very confidently, and they're looking to try and close out the series right here, right now. Yeah, Tigers, like I said, at least they're playing. It looks like they're playing what they want to play, right? The Yone slammed in, the Lissandra slammed in. They're just playing champions that they want to play that they think are good into the composition. They're not leaving anything out on the Rift. I, I really like this composition. Out of the three that they've drafted, this is probably the best one for them and specifically mm -hmm. for their situation and their team. So if they're going to win a game, it's going to be this one, 100%, right? This is their best shot. This is their only shot, unfortunately, because they're down 0-2. Ducks, going to have to execute a little bit better. Going to mm -hmm. have to play and dance around these engage ranges and definitely respect the range of engage from the Tigers here and the angles specifically, right? Lissandra yep. Cl Claw, Yonar, all of these things can come from multiple different angles. So Ducks have to be very hyper aware. They have to ward appropriately and really look to dance around this engage. Mm -hmm. And dancing around is exactly what the Ducks are going to want to do this game. And we'll dance over to a quick break as we get things rolling for game number three of the night. Will the Ducks close out the series with a sweep or will the Tigers start their comeback? We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to game number three of the night. The Ducks are at match point, looking to take home game number three and clean this series out. But the Tigers aren't done yet, and they're looking for a little bit of an invade. But a great ward placed by Spectral already sees this little play being made as they look for it. But they are going to give this ward over to Altric Pony, going to get that one in his back pocket at the very least. And we should see some retaliation vision placed by the Ducks. Yeah, Jarvan's gonna get in here, probably place a ward down onto the red buff once they see him. Camcom spots this out. Dog hugger just gonna Yeah. Oh, wow, it's a really conservative ward coming out from Neural Synaptic here, right? Uh get the mm. ward onto the, the Raptors here instead of the red buff. I guess it doesn't matter because it's gonna expire by the time he gets to that side anyways, but they're gonna figure out where he's starting at the very least. Are they gonna take this ward out though? They don't have a sweeper for it. They already used it on the buff they do. side. Oh, they no, they yeah. they use it butt side yeah, unfortunately, but oh so they know where they're gonna start. Both junglers know. They're playing with full information. Oh, full and information. there's the attempted fake leash from Karthik and Dog Hugger, and it is fasting Senna this game, not farming. Oh so. wow, that's a weird one. So it is just Giga Chad Tank Nautilus here. Yep. It looks like uh, interesting play. Uh, I don't know if I agree with it necessarily, um, but oh, never mind. Oh. I guess it's semi-fasting setup because Karthik just yoinked the minion. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, maybe, maybe. Man, I think it is fasting. I think he's gonna just look to farm here potentially as dog hugger. But he's gotta realize that Nautilus in lane is not that good. There's a reason he don't play him in as like the a main farming pool. guy. Yeah, <laughs> he just has a hard time farming. Has a hard time doing really anything. Uh, and but... his clear, his wave clear pushes very, very fast, and that's a lot of damage there. Also, Dog Hugger, the slows are there as well. They're trying to find the pullback. They cannot find the root, but they do chunk him out quite heavily. Yeah, they chunk him out pretty far. Karthik and Dog Hugger here. Uh, just gonna get shoved in here by the Zaya Lulu. Pretty standard. Uh, if you're gonna play this kind of lane, Zinzao, oh. looking for something. That's a great ward, though, if you already see that one placed by the side of Spectral and Cam. Altric Pony is going to get spotted out here if he does look for the play, but they are just dealing so much damage there to Dog Hugger, but Camcom's chunked a little bit here. They still don't know about the ward, but Karthik's going forward, trying to find the root, and does find that onto Camcom, who does not flash that one away. And the hook lands as well. Oh, the CC chain is there, and they're going to find the kill. First blood over to Karthik again. Oh, oh my word. Cam just not no, respecting the play. The play. They can't find the knockup, and Pity gets away with the claw as well. And they try to make a return play. They just can't find it. Uh -oh, Tigers good. find themselves a big lead. It's a good early game for the Tigers. They got the kill onto the bot lane. Spectral and Camcom. Camcom not respecting it, holding a flash at the very last second. They, I mean, that's just... that's just. has uh, got a flash uh, of W not, there. Not paying attention as well, right? Clearly, you see Dog Hugger and Karthik playing past their wave, walking up towards you. You have to realize the jungler is there, ready to follow up. So I think you just flash that W every single time. Unfortunately, they didn't. They didn't look for it. They didn't really realize what was happening. Camcom pays with their life. The kill goes over to Karthik of all individuals. Oh, oh and Pony's back again. Game. They find this route onto Spectral. He has no way out. He has the cleanse. He has a flash, but he's already sentenced himself to death. He knows he's gone, and he's taken down. Karthik starts the game off 2-0. Beautiful regain coming from Pony, right? Walks all the way around, avoids any potential ward in the river, goes through try, and just says, you know what? Back again, round two. I'm back. Gets the gank up. Yeah, pretty much. Gets the kill. Really good start for the Tigers here. Oh, they are fine. This was a great start here, but East Pity taking a decent chunk of damage. Sloth PhD, though, cannot find the return because the Q went the wrong way. And Torshi trying to trade up against the Snarr is actually doing fair and pretty decently here. It's not the worst thing in the world, but they are going to stop that rap, the little chicken there from falling. And that's going to put that on a late, late, late timer. Yeah, not going to actually work out in Ultra Pony's favor. Would have actually opted in for that going down so he can get the higher camp, level camp on the reset, but instead it's going to delay his own camp. Not gonna get too much effective EH, uh, effective XP. And Torchy playing this Yone to a D, right? Trading perfectly into the Nar, and you see why it's such a hard counter, or soft counter, sorry. Mm -hmm. He pops the E, just dives in onto the, the Nar and trades so much damage that you can't hope to trade it back. It's just so difficult to trade into a Yone whose damage is amplified. It's basically a Z death mark. Not as many steroids on it, but 
you know, it's still very, very strong. And we see Karthik has the most gold in the game right now, and he's not even farming. 2-0 to his name, though, and Ultra Pony's next on the menu there, a second. And Synaptic performing very well at Torchy, though. Faring very, very well into this range versus melee matchup. Yeah, doing a, a, a fantastic job, right? Oh, look who's back! Pony's back down here again! Nautilus oh, has no flash. I don't really have a way in per se, but oh, Paul forced the away, but the ultimate is there. He could use the fate seal to try and buy himself some space. Nielsen Naptic trying to find something, but they can't really look for the play. And they are trying to They're do something. They're letting the lane push here. in. They're letting no, they it push in. It they they do it suss first. it out. They know something's amiss hey. here. Something's a little wonky. Capcom's walking oh into God, the maw of the beast, and it gets slowed down. The hook lands once again. They find the lock, and the root is there. And Capcom is just taken down. Karthik. 3, 0, and 0. All the kills are on the bot side, and the bot side is hard winning once more. And this Torchy looking first? for the play, but Narbar is available, has the ultimate as well. Not going to look for the play, though. 3 0 Karthik Center right now. This is the first lead that the Tigers have taken in the early game. All series, game three, on the line, backs against the wall, and they're coming out swinging. They're not done yet. They've had enough. They're, pick they're bringing out this big pick. Maybe this is why, this is why they didn't pick Center earlier. So they could get it when they needed it most. This could have been it. <laughs> they were waiting. They were biding their time. They're here, baby. They're ready. I'm sorry. Oh my god, I'm choking on the water again. <laughs> I just don't know how to drink water, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, Senna, the Senna pick has been working out for them. Not picking it up early game, but if they lose this, right, they definitely don't get Senna once again, right? Yeah, never. But Pity, gonna be ganked here by Neurosynaptic, but that doesn't really do all that much. It's basically an even trade, all things considered. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, you just It's trade. a Lissandra. It's a Lissandra. You didn't even force the claw out, it looks like. Was able to just walk it out completely. Pity playing this lane really well on the Lissandra. Not giving a Kali anything, not giving thoughts to HD uh, any room to exert his pressure. And Torchy! Once Still again, just trading. looking for the oh damage, looking for the plays here. Gonna miss that last Q, but it doesn't really matter. You know, up 10 CS, and it's trading very well against this Nar, who, again, is the range champ, but Sloth looking for the big play. He has the R2, but beautiful ultimate comes through, but the shields are there. East Pity forced to flash away, and Sloth is going to live to see another day. Sloth and Pity both going to live to see another day here. Good ultimate from Lissandra here. Oh, okay, yeah, he's not going oh. on. You're insane. Neurosynaptic was waiting. Oh, he's just oh, gonna him. Flash yeah, you're dead. Cataclysm is there. He's dead to right. And Pony tries to flash forward, tries to get the damage, and he just can't do it. And they they don't even get anything in return. No, oh my goodness, the... the damage from the Zaya is there, but Karthik is stacking up very nicely. Let's take a look, see at the soul count. 29 souls on the Senna in eight minutes, trying to get to that 40 breakpoint. Two upgrades. Yeah, and he's, he'll probably get to it very soon, right? If he starts following the jungle around, he's gonna get this dragon soul, right? The, sorry, the soul of the drag, the soul that the dragon drops for Senna, he's gonna be able to pick that up. Mm -hmm. God, I, I hate how it's called dragon soul when you have a soul mechanic in the game. Um, yep. Articulation, right? That's yep. what it is. Oh uh, yeah, the soul that the dragon drops for the Senna, you're gonna pick, come on, no, uh, Karthik, no. Karthik, get it. Okay, okay, he's going back for it. <laughs> we see the pings. <laughs> yeah. We see the thing is going for the Oh, oh wait, he might just be dead. He's dead. Torchy oh. just walks out. Oh my god. Uh oh, this is getting from bad to worse here for the Ducks here. Solo kills in the top lane, ganks in the bottom lane, and not even mid is really able to get much other than one kill for Neural Synaptic. The Ducks off to a slow start while Tigers backs against the wall. They're just performing. Diamonds they are showed made up. under pressure, Salt. Diamonds are made under pressure. Yes, sir. This is true. And the Tigers, they are the apex predators of their ecosystem. They are not done just yet. The Ducks have wandered too far forward, and they may be taken down. We'll see, though. The game's not over yet. No, not by a long shot. And the Ducks, uh, aptly named by me, some of the late game team fighting teams. So even if it doesn't... Oh, uh -oh. wait. Pony's caught out. Sloth going over the wall, they find Ultra Pony, no that's flash. a lot of damage now, the smite is there, beautiful crescent guard to try and buy some space, Karthik has joined the fight as well, they're looking for something, find some decent damage on the spectral, beautiful feather storm buys the space, buys the time, but East Pity forced to go over the wall, Karthik trying to run for the hills, has that move speed and the stealth to get away. 
Yeah, really nice roam coming out from Sock PhD. Just able to catch, you know, Ultric Pony with his pants down, right? He saw him just W over the wall as he was roaming. It was like, oh, wait, there's a guy here. Neo Synaptic. Okay, looking mid. Ooh. Oh, if that E lands, you know both of them go. Oh, in. yeah, both for sure. For sure. Uh -oh. And Torp, she just keeps trading super aggressively up against Paul. And again, it's the Nars can't really trade very effectively against this Yone. Oh, God. gets caught out of the hop as well. And it's just not even remotely close at this point. Torchy just keeps trading super effectively. Pity trying to get out will be able to walk away without even burning the claw again. Yeah, the thing is, KL Paul needs oh, to trade while he's mark. in Meganar the form. Wall, the wall up is there. Torchy is going to be able to walk away, though. Ooh, eats a house on the way back as well. Really good trade. And yeah, I was about to say, Nar and KL Paul in this matchup needs to trade pretty much primarily when he's in Meganar form because of the ex extended EHP. And the effective Oh the my goodness, range. Torchy's looking he for the play. He has the ultimate available right as well. Flash is up for this player, and he's not going to be able to find a beautiful flash, and they cannot find the kill. Torchy is going to be able to walk away. No, he's taking Whoa! down the auto the attack. The turret shot. The turret <laughs> jump was auto attack. Oh my god. From downtown. From downtown, baby. They find the play, and Spectral going to be able to dodge away there from the root from Karthik. But. Camcom is waiting in the wings, looking to defend the AD carry of the Ducks. Yeah, Camcom tired of dying, starting to ward the tri tri <laughs> and You know, I'm going to pink this. I'm going to ward that. Look, they even warded the, the bush up ahead. If you see the farthest bush in the lane, they are tired of these cheesy ganks from uh, Trick Pony here. They're not going to let them get any more. Dragon is coming up in about a minute and a half. You're going to see the vision probably getting set down. Reset for more wards. So far, so good, though. The Ducks have been able to stabilize, and what was once a 2.5k gold lead for the Tigers has now shrunk down to about 800. Yeah, I mean, they've been making great counterplay so far, and, you know, Torchy dying there is pretty massive. And Sloth is looking for something here onto Pony. He has the damage as well. Look at that. Sure, Katos is there. Crescent Guard is available, but the bot lane is there. Beautiful depth charge. Buys some space onto Sloth PhD, but East Pity's not there spectral. just yet. Crescent Guard buys time, buys space, but the exhaust Watch is there to protect spectral. them. But they find some damage with Neural Synaptic onto the backline. Spectral goes. He's dealing so much damage, but Karthik is strong. Karthik is alive. It's a double what? kill onto Lissandra, though, but Crescent Guard is going to get him to safety. Karthik forced to flash away. Torchy is down on the top side as well. Neural Synaptic, beautiful play, but he's going to be taken down. The Triumph, it's not. He lives. Neural Synaptic lives and Spectral finds the play, finds the damage. The lethal tempo is there and the dragon's up in a minute. A clean ace coming out from the duck. The team fight prowess once again shows up. The Lulu pick, Spectral going virtually untouched in that team fight. Oh, while well, that's happening, K.O. Paul gets his revenge. He says, full tank, Nar, you've got nothing on this. Destroys Torchy in the 1v1 solo kill. Able to pick up some minions, able to get the solo kill to reset him. No TP as well, so Torchy's gonna miss roughly a wave and uh, about a little bit of wave and a little extra. They pick up the gold swing. Clean. Yep, 2,000, almost 2,000 gold swinging in the favor of the Ducks here. And Dragon's coming up in 20 seconds. We're about to see another team fight between these two teams. Just like that, the gold lead is in favor of the Ducks. They had a solid early game, but the Tigers blunder. They try and find a play, but they just didn't have the damage. They didn't have the items, and now they are on the back foot once more. Can they pull themselves out of this hole? Ooh, it will be tough, right? The early game was going to be their strongest point. Dragon actually being handed over to the Tigers here. Ducks opting to give it away, opting to fight the maybe the third and fourth Dragon, which is fine. You can do that. Oh, Torchy's looking Torchy. for Paul. Doing some decent damage there. The Soul Unbound is going to be used here. Paul taking some decent damage, but he's getting collapsed on. Fate Sealed over oh. the wall means he gets out to safety. The Bay of Blue Buff does reset. Fate Seal on a pretty low cooldown, so I, that's why you just see Torchy kind of ripping it when he can, whether defensively or offensively. Uh, Sloth no, PhD. they're trying to find the play here onto Torchy. A lot of damage from Sloth using that fate or Soul Unbound to try and buy some space, but over the wall goes Paul, finds a beautiful play, finds an R into the wall and takes him down. Yeah, with an assistance from PhD here, really nice getting the full damage out, living, you know, setting up KL Paul for the alley-oop pretty much. Uh, East Pity though, looking to get a, they're gonna get a four-man dive here. Cam spots it out, but can they do anything about it? Can, can Spectral get, get out in time? He has to cleanse, has the Feather Storm available as well. The TP's gonna be used, Depth Charge is down, the Root is gonna be used, forces the Feather Storm early. They aren't taking any damage from the tower, but they force the TP. Pony might be stuck, Crescent Guard flies some space. Oh, just about to go onto the backline, onto Pity. He's taking so much damage, but a beautiful ultimate from the Lulu, buys so much space. Pony's trying to live, trying to 
live, but the Dawning Shadow's not enough. Karthik trying to run for the hills, gonna get knocked up there by the Flag and Dragon combo, and Doghogger over the wall is trying to find their way, but the Shurikin Toss gets PhD over the wall, like for a little bit more damage under this tower, they find the root onto something, but is gonna use that Zonius to buy some space, but it's Paul, the big tank in the top lane, finds Neural Sadaptic the kill. Four kills going over to the Ducks here, turning a dive completely on its head, very good TP coming out from KL Paul and Sloth PhD here. Able to turn what was gonna look like a very bleak dive into a four for zero. Ducks have all the momentum. Ducks are waddling, they're paddling their way to the semifinals matchup. 27,000 to 23k gold, a 4k gold lead. Ducks are firmly back in control of the game. They pull it back, and now they're driving fast. They're putting the pedal to the metal. They're not letting plays happen. They are reading these plays super, super well and responding in kind. The reactions coming in from the Ducks are just on point here. Mm -hmm. KL Paul, 4-1-2 oh, over the, the wall. Star, finds the a beautiful thing. hop there. Trying to find Torchy. The damage is there. Torchy cannot get over the wall. Paul going to force him over the wall. But Pony, oh, he finds the cutoff point, and Torchy's going to be able to walk over to the tower. Yeah, Torchy's got to E over. Or, sorry. I think he's got your Q over. He's gonna be able to Q over, third Q over. Oh, oh over. Page Seal gets him out to safety, but the Gnar is there. Oh, but a Crescent Sweep Ooh. for Crescent Car gets him out to safety. And Camcom is there, but just has to help their top laner shove the wave. Yeah, pretty much. Just gonna get the wave in. KL Paul. Uh, it's a 3v2. 3v2. He's pity he finds a play. It's Mini Nari. Does, takes a lot of damage here. And Torchy gonna try and find some damage as well. They can't find Paul. The burn is there. The red smite is just not enough. And the team has arrived. The cavalry is here. And they're looking to take this Rift Herald. Really good patience from Camcom. Not burning the ultimate at all. It ends up opting to burn the W and the E. Knowing that KL Paul is gonna live. Don't know if she was out of mana. I see the low mana. She opted, or they, sorry, opted not to burn it. Uh, very solid play from them. Great looks coming forward. The Rift Herald is up. It seems as though the side of the Tigers want to try and grab this one up while they do see Sloth on the bottom side here. That super strong Akali, who's 1-1-8 one, one support, you know, is chilling down the bot side. And the, or the Jarvis is just not there in time, forced to base. And they are going to at least grab an objective bounty for themselves. Now grab the objective bounty. Those have kicked in. It's 5k gold lead at the 17 minute mark. Gonna be able to show up some gold, pick up the Rift Herald, like you said. Potentially use to crack open the mid lane turret. Ideally, that's where you want to use it. Uh, but it is just, it is what was a really dominant early game. Just not able to clutch it out so far. And Tigers failing in the mid game once again. Uh, just really unfortunate as Torchy trying his damnedest to. Oh, it's not even close. Any Menard to the wall. The shield bow has been procced, and Paul doing so much damage here. Bird and Torchy down to the ground. He's trying to run for the hills. The bullet toss is going <laughs> to find the kill, and a beautiful play from Paul finds another solo bolo. Death charge oh, on the Sloth PSD. They're trying to find something here while they can. Wind become light. They're going to go wide on the stun target. They can't find it. He's pity, though. Trying to peel off Neo Synaptic. Karthik trying to deal as much damage as they can. Camcom is there. Finds that huge of five. Finds the well growth. A Sloth PSD nice. into the backline. Looking for Karthik. Has the shuriken toss back. Look at have his health disappear in an oh, instant. Slot! And he's pity. Trying to go into the backline. Pony tries to find the damage. He does not have the stain to do it. And it's a double kill for the PhD. The doctor is in the house. Doctor's in the house, and you better leave right now, because he's got he's got a diagnosis that the Tigers aren't going to like. 0-3 in the quarterfinals. Ducks looking to take this game, finally. They're just waiting on the Baron timer. 34 to 29K, nearly a oh, 5K no, goal Oh, yeah. the Nard to the wall. He's taking so much damage. He's stuck at the fate seal. The wallop stuns him up for his fate. His fate has been sealed. Paul is going to be able to go in, but fate sealed under the tower. Wait, he's going to turn it around. Shut down. Torchy seals the fate of Paul, but they lose the mid tower in response. Yeah, gets the shutdown onto the Yone. That's not what you want to do. You don't want to give this guy some gold. The last thing you want is a late game Yone on the enemy team. Hard carrying, right? I've seen it happen before. It happens all the time. Dragon finally being taken by the Ducks here, opting in to take the third Infernal Drake, the third dragon of the game, the first Infernal Drake of the game. Infernal Soul will be the soul of choice. Oh my as goodness! Well. They're Stop looking for pity here. They have the ultimate. Oh, Shuriken Toss is going to land as well, oh, but it's all going to be Dark Hooker finds the play to try and save Pity, but it's not enough. Over the wall goes Akali. It does not even matter. The team is falling apart. Pity is trying to find something, but Pony's dead as well. It's just looking so rough for the side of the Tigers, and they can't do anything except watch. And Baron is up right now. It has just spawned. They are turning their eyes towards the Baron. The Ducks. 
see blood in their eyes. They want to go for the throw. They want to end this game. They want to go home and go to sleep. Baron being taken up. They have the damage. Jungler is not up for the Tigers. An easy Baron pick up for the Ducks here. They're going to take this reset. And then again, they might do another game ending push. It could be another game ending push here. Sloth going to try and buy some space here for the team. Does not even matter because they're not up in time. They're going to grab this one up nice and easy and move wherever they need to. Going to try and shove these side, la or side lanes out, get some more towers in their back pocket, and, you know, just become the new Apex Predators, I guess. I mean, they're trying to, <laughs> like, look, the Ducks are just popping off here. They're taking out the Tigers. I mean, if the Tigers lose the Ducks, that makes them the Apex Predator, right? That's how it I, works. I'm I have to agree. I have to agree. Every single member on the Ducks is popping off. Positive scorelines across the board. Five, six, five, five. Everybody on the Ducks is playing very, very well. After a very rough start to the early game, they're able to stabilize. This is something the Tigers could not do when they were down in the early game. When they were down like that, they could not stabilize. They could not pick themselves back up. And that's the main difference between these two teams, right? Ducks know that they can play far behind. Just look at the player gold. Slot, Spectral, and Synaptic all on the top of the leaderboards right now at 9,000 gold. I mean, it is just a, a huge gold lead. It is about 8,000 gold for the Ducks here. They're going to opt in for the 1-3-1 one, one split push here, which is fine. Nobody can match Kale Paul. Nobody can match Slot PhD. They're going to look to push in all of the Tier 2 turrets standing. Oh, and they're looking for Pity. They find the root there. They're trying to find Eurosynaptic. They force the flash as well, but they don't really have the damage. The Wallgrove going to keep that alive, but Best Spectral forces the Feather Storm under the tower. The Gale Force trying to find Karthik. They cannot do it. Eurosynaptic is going to be able to walk away, and it is going to be a zero for zero, but Summoner's burned on both sides. Summoner's burned. Both teams bleeding, but it looks like the Tigers are bleeding just a little bit more, as now Spectral's going to be able to free hit the turret as the Baron minions crash into the Tier 2 and potentially the Tier 3 bottom tier turret here. Slot PhD. Looking around, just looking to auto this right now. So much damage. Root under the tower. It's not enough, though. And Torchy trying to find something, but going to get rooted up by Spectral, taking so much damage. Half health already. And they are going to push this wave. The cannon minion doing so much work, sieging these towers down in Sloth, pushing in this bot side as well. They're doing so much damage. They're taking these towers down nice and easy. Lemon squeezy. And there's just nothing the Tigers can do. And that's the Tigers can do, but watch and wait as they're base gets dismantled piece by piece like a kid with a with an old action figure tearing it apart oh, and now the final base play, defense snap, but he takes no damage the donic shadow does nothing as well and paul has the ultimate he's going to look for the super play narod's two pushing them back beautiful cataclysm finds stuck in the middle of everyone and they find one kill they find the nar but is that really the player you want to find they find the hook though onto neo synaptic but that is still the tank Spectral both tanks hitting. are doing so much damage the is just popping off using the range advantage karthik's trying to find it trying to do as much as he can. It's going to be a one Wait. through. It's not a one for one. Karthik lives it. And is this enough to save the game? That's the real question. You're also have to going in, trying to find pity, but they are going to back away in the end. Oh, they could potentially look for this. You know, so and Soft PhD are up. They, get, they have to They have to get up into the back. Oh my god, so many super minions are crashing into the base right now. It's like it's five too super hard. minions right now. The cannons just doing so much more. They're trying to find Cam. They're trying to find Cam. Calm. They cannot oh do god, it. The tower's going to go there. down. The tower's going to go down. They get both towers and so they're just going to walk away for free. Banging on the front step, these super minions or the cannon minions take down the remaining Nexus turret. It's an open Nexus, it's an open ba base, and this case is shut closed. Dragon's coming up in 55 seconds. The ducks are gonna reset, they're gonna take their bank accounts, cash it into boards, and they're gonna go for the last potentially final push of this game. One mistake from the Tiger spells the end of their run here. They need to try and get their act together in the next 30 seconds or this game is over. Their time is done and time is of the essence here. They're on a clock. Oh yeah, and it's ticking. It's ticking very, very quickly. It's, it's, it's 2x speed right now for these guys. 24 to 9, nearly a 10k gold lead for the Ducks. There's no possible way they throw this right. So there's no possible way. No way they do. But Paul trying to find something on TP's pity. They're TPing topside. They're going to give up this dragon. They're trying to find Paul. Torchy has found the TP. Fate Seal going to go wide over the wall. Goes Paul. And they can't really do all that much. Doghugger trying to run for the hills. They're just going to go and for Karthik the base. Is there as well. They're going for the base. They're going for the base. They sent two top. What are they doing? They're trying. And Sloth PhD is there. Pity has arrived as well. They're trying to find Sloth. They find the root. They find the ultimates there. And Spectral going for it. Finds Karthik. A lot of damage is down as well. They're flashing forward trying to find Spectral. He's trying to free hit, but he cannot free hit enough. The That's wall growth should be enough. He's not enough to stay alive, though. But Neurosynaptic stuck in the middle of the cataclysm. Pity does make it back to the fountain. But oh, their health bars are so low. Minutes. 
end. They have the resets. It's over. It's a triple kill for the Jarvan. It's a triple kill for the end of the game. And the play has been made. And the Ducks win the series 3-0. The Ducks go march, 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 as they march their ways into the semi. The finals matchup, a clean 3-0. It's just phenomenal play from these guys. Oh my goodness, the Ducks just played so well beginning to end. They showed so many ways that they can play the game and they just popped off. There's nothing more you can say. The Ducks are looking incredible. They're swinging that momentum. Six games in a row. Will they be able to make it nine next week? We'll find out in just a little bit, but we should have the pull up very, very shortly. But quack, 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 the Ducks take home the W. And they take home the W3-0, showed fantastic comp flexibility. They played the Assassin mid lane. They played the Mage mid lane. They played the Yasuo mid lane. Like, it is, there is so much flexibility, right? And KL Paul showing a lot of flexibility, building Bambi Cinder on every champion, any champion <laughs> at all. <laughs> Quite flexible indeed there with those build paths, right? <laughs> very, very. We jest, we jest. But... We will be back in just a second. MVP poll should be live in just a little bit, and we'll be back to announce who wins that MVP. We'll see you in just a little bit.
Hello, chat. Welcome back into the desk. And we've just had our culmination of the series tonight, the best of five. Ducks took it 3-0 against the Tigers. The Tigers <laughs> almost... <laughs> had... <laughs> I don't think I heard that. I don't think I heard that. Uh, no, now, no. Soul, you were really close in getting your prediction correct, though, right? I got to give you yeah, props for that one. Cool. Yeah, you, you were, were very, very close, close, too. Great Thanks, job, man. man. Yeah. Holy crap, that was close. You know, almost yeah, had it. Yeah, I appreciate it. that. Uh, right, Shibby, since you're so eager to talk, 3 0, <laughs> you called it from the beginning. Talk to me about that. Uh, the the Tigers almost had it in that last game. It's 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 when you look at matches like this. It, it, I don't necessarily always when you're doing these kind of predictions. I don't necessarily always just look at like kind of the team comps and stuff like that. You want to take into account form. You have to take into account the intangibles, right? Like the who are they playing with? What kind? What 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 kind of week did they come off of? Right? Did they come off a losing week or did they come off a strong week? How are scrims going? And those unfortunate intangibles that happened to the Tigers where they had to roll swap their main jungler to ADC, they had to get a new jungler in, like all these kinds of stuff. I mean, for them to try to come back and claw back and win it 3-2 would have been nothing short of a miracle against the Ducks who have been, you know, yeah, they swapped their players around, but at least they've been playing for a little bit longer, right? The bot lane is the newest addition. They swapped that, I believe, two weeks ago now. Um, they swapped their top laner, but, you know, the core was still there. You didn't have anybody lane swapping. You still had a lot of your key fundamental players still playing, right? Sloth PhD, Neural Synaptic, Camcom as well. Those guys all all were still there and they're very flexible players they can kind of build as you see they can play and, and choose around what they want to so i mean all those things combined yeah i, I think 3-0 was a no-brainer for me it was probably the most confident 3-0 i've predicted uh just because of their form what's been happening and not necessarily like the champion pool and the team comps and stuff like that i, I wasn't really focusing on that when it comes to these kinds of stuff you really need to focus on what the intangibles are I am surprised how much thought you put into it, Shibby, considering you're a guy that chokes on drinking water. Uh, no, that's a great, it's a great synopsis. I appreciate that. Don't, don't make me do it. <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll, do it, I'll, ch I'll choke again. Uh, no, please not on air. There's a health and safety code. I'll have to have a talk with HR. Uh, salt, <laughs> then. So in that final game of the evening, where do you feel that the Tigers suddenly lost it because they they had a really good early start a uh, really good early game and then it kind of just flipped yes what happened who got the kills it was sloth doesn't matter you're playing a collie into an adc the adc goes bye bye karthik got fed karthik played well the ball lane and the jungler played very very well but it does not matter when sloth gets a super duper early or a, assassin kill you know pops off wins the game and it's there's not much you can really do the only fed member was the senna and senna doesn't really do all that much into an akali who will just burst her down through exhaust you saw half the hp bar disappears through exhaust so sloth played super well mechanically the akali looked super clean but uh, the, it's just very unfortunate that the kills ended up there and that is how the game just sort of spiraled out of control when sloth was able to pick up those big picks yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that Akali was looking mean. Uh, there was that tower dive right towards the end of the game and just bam, just half health and people. Uh, Shibi then, we have the MVP of the evening of the series. Do you want to talk us through this one? I believe it is Camcom. Seven votes there. I think we have a graphic production. Was there... Was there vote manipulation that happened? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a toss-up, right? It's between Cam. I think Sloth PhD had a very solid case. Uh, Neural Synaptic as well. Uh, maybe less so. I think the ordering would have been for me. Uh, uh, Sloth, Cam, and then Neural Synaptic, but very well-deserved. They played super well. I do believe they played three unique champions in this series. Uh, um, and, and really... I, They've told me, you know, in private that they've been practicing different champions, right? They've been practicing new compositions. They've definitely put the work in, and it is showing now, right? Put the hours. Yeah, put in the – oh, my God. 
I put in the hours. Yeah, they're ready to devour. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, and also to overcome the challenge of playing with a new bot laner, right? That's a whole nother thing, building that synergy, uh, you know, allowing yourself to kind of go down in the early game gracefully and come back super strong, right? You know, they, they don't, Ducks don't generally play for their bottom lane, but every single time that they have not been given resources, they've been able to come out either even or just slightly behind, which is very, very impressive, especially if you're drafting these sort of compositions where it heavily relies on your jungle and your mid laner popping off. Uh, yeah, they've been super reliant. I think we can clearly and evidently see that within the bottom lane, Camcom is the linchpin, right? It's not the AD carry player, which just speaks dividends to them as a player and really... Put in a lot of work, uh, like you said, ready to devour, whatever you want to say. Um, well deserved, probably deserved it a while ago in any of the other weeks, but definitely best to get it on a quarterfinals match. Absolutely. So, anything that wasn't said by Shibby on that? I mean, think about it this way three games were played, that's basically a death per game, but remember, majority of them came from game number three when the ganks came over and over and over again, so Cam just played super consistent tonight, I think was the realistically the most consistent player on the Ducks, you know, played very well, very consistent, provided the value that you're supposed to out of those supports, and, I mean, just good looks overall, Cam did a great job tonight, and I think we do have something going on here, if I'm not mistaken. Do we have, like, a player interview or something? Is that what we got? Or not? Hello? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> we do, in fact, do interview. God? We do. Is that God? God? Where I... are you? Yes, I'm God. I'm to pick with you. Oh, no, Shivy. Shivy is committing slander against me and my team, you guys, on the stream. I'm sorry. I cannot stand for this. He's claiming vote manipulation. My votes were not manipulated. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, I, I guess we can get an impromptu interview here, Sai. I guess we can each ask one question. I'll start it off so that you guys can think about your questions. Pray, right? I, I just want to give you some time. I don't know. Uh, Cam, coming into this match, coming into this series, you guys were definitely on point into your series some of you some of the other people are doubting your guys's strength within the games right? i Normal can't believe games, them stuff that kind of stuff i mean how do you guys uh, adapt you know obviously you've answered the question personally with the meta but what do you guys take for your guys's criticism right being a late game team <laughs> drafting sort of one dimensional i mean what goes into getting your different drafts getting your different compositions because you showed three different compositions i mean how does that what do you guys do into that how do you guys do that my team is trying to tell me what to say. No, 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 no. Stop yelling me, you weirdo. Hey, this is okay. your moment. I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so drafting. Uh, Sloth does all of our drafting. I I make programs that do scouting. And then he either decides to use them or he says, no, heck that. And then he doesn't use them. And then he makes really cool drafts for us that sometimes we hate. Like game three, I was like, guys, I'm not playing Lulu. They left it up. I want to play Bard. And then they were like, no, we're going to be one Lulu. So that was that was my evolution. I... <laughs> okay, solid answer. Yeah, there you go. Well, I just wanted to play Bard, man. The last time I was in a quarterfinals, I played Bard game two. So I was going to play game three, but then it just like didn't happen. Save it for the finals. Save Bard for the finals. You'll be fine. True. Uh, I heard I'm facing Guardians in the finals, so uh, well, no attack. Look spoilers. out for your mid lane. We I'm haven't gone to that yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, so, do you want to throw your question to Camcom? All right. We talked about the past, now let's talk about the future. Your next opponent is the Unicorns. Guardians will be that final hurdle, but let's let's talk about the Unicorns for a second. They were looking really good in the regular season. They came out on top, but now, you know, dropping down to the, you know, the lower bracket. How do you how do you think you guys are going to face up against them? What's your plan going in now that you know your opponent? Um I think Unicorns are probably a really good matchup for us because they play really strongly um, for the top side, right? And typically we do too. I mean, you guys you guys see like we bot, bot lane, we either go even or we don't. That, that's typically how it goes. So, and then they typically do the same. So it's like if we, if one of our bot lanes wins the lane, then it's a, it's, 
I was about to curse. Uh, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's really just all on the top side. So it, it it's going to be mostly in the drafts, I think. Mostly in the scouting and the, the champions that we decide, or I say we sloth decides to pick for us. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, thank you. There you go. Uh, my question, I don't really, I didn't really have anything super mega big brain planned, but I just want to know, Camcom, it feels like, you know, I see you in a lot of the Discord, like, rooms and stuff. <laughs> you, you've jumped, you forced your way into this interview here. Do you, what? Do you... I asked Chippy and he said yes. Hold on. <laughs> I'm being slandered again. Oh, my God. Wait. Nothing but slander on this show. <laughs> Would you say that you're the parent uh, duck of the of the group do you keep everyone tied together in the team veteran duck old duck Bill. uh yeah i'm the i'm the parent duckling that uh throws their hands up says guys i got covid two days ago uh and then all of a sudden apparently our match changed by like an hour i thought we were still to start at eight and apparently everyone else knew that we were starting at seven except for me so <laughs> I was going around freaking out, and then I was like, you know what? It's time to take a nap. So that's a pretty parent thing to do, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean, normally it's the <laughs> kids that get the time wrong. They're having the nap, but I'll I'll, I'll give it to you on this one. Uh, that That's lovely. Thank you, Kim. Uh, I'm being told the... that I'm apparently oh. a dictator and not a parent. I'm a dictator duck now. A duck tater, okay. I think, in this case. <laughs> Um, is there anything else, Camcom, that you want to say before you go? Say anything to your to your fans, to your yes. many MVP voters in the chat? Um, <laughs> Sloth, I'm not gonna say it. I'm sorry. You got to get the interview uh, next week for you to come say your say your words. But uh, come come VAS tomorrow. That's that's my home over there. Yay! Uh, I don't know. We're gonna go beat. Uh, we're gonna do the G two. We're gonna like r drop really hard in like the last week of regular season and just 3-0 the rest of the season you know we're not dropping the game wow big words have been spoken unicorns watch out guardians <laughs> watch out not dropping a game okay there you have it speed runs hey, lower get out of here Kemp, get out of here right now <laughs> waddle out of here waddle out of here forcing your way in Oh my gosh, I'm being kicked. Goodbye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye, Cam. Yeah. Bye, Cam. I'm not going to see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, impromptu interview. <laughs> that was nice. That was good. That was, that was lovely. Um, You guys raised a good point, though. Uh, or, well, you know, we kind of brought up the fact that Guardians 3 owed Unicorns. That's what we've got look, uh, to look forward to next week is Unicorns versus uh, the Ducks. The Guardians are sitting up at the front. In the finals now, they are there. So one of these teams is going to be facing off against the Guardians. This was a bit of a couple with the Unicorns getting 3 0 We had two 3 0s tonight. Who who was expecting that? Uh, well, I did say, I think, on week six, we have the VOD. I'm pretty sure Guardians were sandbagging. I think my power rankings going into it, though, was I think I put Unicorns 1, Ducks 2, Guardians 3. Uh... So, I mean, definitely that's that's what it is. But it did feel like the Guardians were just kind of playing off, right? It, it, there's no – and I think we talked about it offline, Sai and, and Salt, that there's no mm -hmm. way a team just collapses halfway through the season without something catastrophic happening. And they got their bearings. They found out. They figured out whatever their funk was, and they got it back. And they're able to just 3-0 the Unicorns. Uh, they also did it apparently with two subs. So that's even oh, wow. more impressive. Wow. So I I, 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 I fear the team that has to play the Guardians in the grand finals with Guardians full roster. Yeah, that's scary. Salt, the Guardians are. Correct me if I'm wrong. They are the reigning champions. So they won the winter split, mm -hmm. correct? So they they are defending their title here. Do you think that the Unicorns or or the uh, Ducks have what it takes to potentially offset the Guardians and take it? Hmm. I think the Unicorns don't really match up all that well, player-wise versus the Guardians. I think they're stronger in the air in different areas than the Guardians are. Where I think the Guardians are more well-rounded overall, and they can look to po focus pressure points, and that's why the Guardians are really strong. The Ducks, though, I think they have a really, really strong top side, and they know how to let their bot side play weak. So I think overall, my power ratings go like this as of tonight. Can you give it? I'm gonna put Guardians. I think they're still number one. 
Ducks mm-hmm. number two, Unicorns number three. Okay. Okay, Shippy, what about you? Uh, you you kind of mentioned some power rankings a second ago, but just for ease, do you want to say them again for me or what way you place everyone now? Uh, I, 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 the thing is, I, I'm hesitant to say Guardians 1 because I haven't seen their games, but if they can 3-0 the top regular season team with two subs, I, I, that's that's number one in my book. Like That's just wildly impressive, right? And again, I'm looking at the intangibles. It's It's... Imagine you play against a team with subs and you lose 3-0. And you, as the Ducks, pretty much have your full roster. Now you have to play against a team that has their full roster and they 3-0. Like, it, it, it's Guardians 1. Uh, yeah, it's scary. I'm going to go Ducks 2, Unicorns 3. I think Ducks are riding momentum. Unicorns mm-hmm. are on the low right now. It looks like. It looks like they've got a pretty solid draft strategy as well on the duck side, right? They have very good comp flexibility. Again, I, I need to see the games. I need to see. Yeah. Hopefully, they were streamed, or hopefully, I can get a replay of them from one of the guy, one of the guys on the Guardians or the Unicorns team, so I can actually like VOD review. But for now, I think it's just I think Guardians, Ducks, and Unicorns, and I think okay. finals will be Guardians, Ducks, and Guardians takes it three two. Okay. Wow. Already making okay predictions yeah. on predictions. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll have to wait and see what that final score is going to be and who those final two teams are going to be. We know, Chet, the Guardians are definitely in the final. Next week, on Tuesday, we're going to be back with another best of five between the Ducks and the Unicorns. Everything to play for to get into the finals and to make more money. That's what we want to see. But without further ado, we will be looking to probably end up the show in just a moment. Remember to follow the Discord, join the Discord. You can get in the Benz channel. You can check out all the info on all the leagues that we got going on all throughout the week, every single day. There's a lot of action happening, so make sure you're in there. Of course, follow the channel, follow us on socials, Twitter and whatnot, and you can just kind of stay tuned with everything that's happening here on the Victorious GG channel. That's going to be it from me, Sai. It's going to be uh, saying, or we're going to be saying goodnight to Salt, Shibby, Salt, anything you want to say before we head out for the night and then coming over to you, Shibby. It's an exciting set of playoffs here. Very fast, very furious. So I'm super excited what we're going to see next week. All That's right. all you know, I got. Shibby. Obviously, shout out to the players playing, shout out to the Victoria staff, shout outs to you, Sai Salt, for obviously showing up and being early and not. You know, not being late like I always am. Obviously, big ups to Big Tank, right? The man behind the mirror, the Wizard of Oz himself, you know, making us look good, all the transitions and everything. Uh, you know, follow Victorious on social media, you know, Twitter, I don't know, Twitch, YouTube, whatever. They've got the VOD cave there. Obviously, follow all of us on Twitter, Twitch, whatever we have. Cyber has some fire tweets that are, that are like, <laughs> like, honestly, they're pretty, they're pretty freaking funny when I see hey, them. Thanks, man. Um, so really, really good. His Twitter is definitely some of the best stuff I get in the morning. My morning is nighttime, that. so it's awesome. So definitely follow all of us. Support, support Victor. Support everybody. Tune in next week. Same time, same place. That's all. Mm-hmm. Let's get it. All right, chat. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thanks, Big, for all the production stuff. Uh, we'll see you next week, chat. See ya. Fast life, I'm moving in slow-mo. I'm a god, but I actually don't know. Homie, better put your pride aside. My bands get more like a Volvo. Your best stuff looks like my worst. Synapses, fire, and burst. Got the whole crew with me. About to do damage. You know we ain't average. I ain't gonna set it again, but it's in my time. Better look in my eyes. I'm a genius in the skies. With my heart on my sleeve. If you force, you go block to a king in his prime. Everybody got a line. Sit back with the stars in line. I finesse like my life on the nine. Was a diamond in the rough, and now I shine. No one can stop us. They'll try, but they won't. Nothing will split the bottom. Oh no.